Hey there! What do you say there, world? Welcome back for another incredible episode of the Racers Recap, which is now being named the Losers Lounge. Since the Winner's Circle has out is out there now, this is the no. official Losers Lounge. <laughs> oh, I am your number no. one loser and We're second place finisher, Justin, <laughs> and uh, another uh, loser and second place finisher, my man Joey Cavino. How are you? Awesome. Thank you so much. Great to have you on, Penn and Kim. Kim and Penn. Uh, loved, yeah. it. loved it. Loved it. Loved it. And uh, we can't call her a loser because she's won gold medals, but third place finisher, Jen Hudak. How are you? Fantastic. Happy to be here. And giving us. To work on the name of the. We're going to rebrand. We're going to work on it. <laughs> and giving us some credibility, the only winners on this show right now. Kim and Penn, how are you doing? <laughs> Uh, it is an honor to finally be on this show. We've been watching you guys for a while. It was a, it was part of our research uh, when we were going to come on the show, and uh, we loved you guys on the show. I think I like you even more on this podcast. I feel like jo do. Joey reminds me of all of my fraternity brothers. Uh, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's kind of great. Uh, so you, you, know, you had a lot of douchebags in that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and I yes. was one of them. <laughs> so it's okay. Uh, well, a lot of a lot of people like me better on this show than they did uh, on the Amazing Race. That is one hundred percent true. Um, and Jen is always lovable. Uh, Jen yeah. is always everyone's favorite. Yeah, she was my favorite when I was watching. And I was I was yeah, legitly no, I, pissed I, I, off totally, at the winners. We, we of totally her used her YouTube video to pack. Yeah, you would. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. I never I never got like a a female packing perspective, so that was very helpful. Excellent. Glad yeah. you did. Jen was my favorite right up until the restraining order. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but one thing you didn't listen to by watching this podcast is you brought two backpacks <laughs> Listen, i know you addressed this before we get started yeah two weeks ago this here is why two weeks ago we went on a quick trip to florida just to get the heck out of dodge and we were like let's just bring carry-ons we get off the plane in florida pen looks at me goes i didn't bring my bag he left it in the airport bathroom. Yeah, we had to double up on a lot of stuff. So I, I have to say, I was never, I love my husband. He's so good at so many mm -hmm. things. If we brought one bag, we were going to run the race with no bag. Like it was just not going to happen. Oh my I mean, God. If, if we had lost a backpack. I, 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 it's not like I can fit into your clothes, but yes, we did like double up and like had extra gloves, extra hats, extra sunglasses, extra like and medication. I, I get that. But on the race, it's almost impossible to lose your bag. Like you can't it, really lose it. It, it, it also, it also didn't adversely affect us for one single second, but so we can, you know what? Let's move on. Yes. We'll get there. <laughs> Matthew <laughs> told us to say, let's yeah, move yeah. on. Matthew Hen Matthew Hennon. Thank you so much for the super chat. 40 bucks. I can't believe it. And, and then following that up is Ray Fletcher with 50 bucks. That is literally like double what we've made for the whole season. So thank you guys okay. so much. Uh, again, I don't do this for the money. I do this because I love the show and I love being nerdy, hanging out with the super fans like you and being able to share one of my few talents with the world, which is knowing a lot about a, a, a television show. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you guys so much. Like Ray, you've been a, a rock star all season and I feel like I have to have you on the show as a guest at some point. Um, but thank you very much. It really means a lot. All right. Uh, so this, uh, this is, there's a lot, a lot to, to get into. Um, uh, we had a lease on last week and there was really no way to follow it up unless you get somebody like Kim and Penn. So I thank you guys for agreeing to come on. I know you've been bombarded with interviews like since you've been, I mean, forever. No, but we were excited. We were excited when you reached out. That's awesome. Uh, so uh, where do we start? Do, do you want to run through the episodes and then interview or you want to interview and then episodes? Let's, totally up let's, to you. Let's run, let's run through because they can give us the finale yeah. back. Okay. And, stuff. and this is like the one the one episode my wife and both of my kids are sick and James Earl is sick as well, which is why he is not here. Um I had this is the one episode I haven't been able to watch the bonus footage and I didn't watch the last like ten minutes of your podcast where I just saw saw you starting to show the pictures and I think I was like, damn, they show them. I didn't even know you ever showed those. So I'm I'm a little uh a little unprepared. Well, not as prepared as I normally am watch the bonus footage either sorry. there wasn't i i looked it up and there wasn't a ton not yet for this one yeah you're talking about youtube right yeah there's yeah the, no there's not a ton 
I, I think I think they may be putting it out later, or maybe they. Uh, yeah. Well, they, it's they, CBS. We're the redheaded stepchild really of CBS. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's like, like the that. show's over. They did that. The show's over. Screw them. They're holding the skits for enough YouTube hits, and then they'll just take them all down next season for some reason because they don't know how to run a YouTube channel. Um. Okay, oh, let's get. To, <laughs> they they're dumb. They they legit like take it. They, they'll put the bonus footage up, and then they'll take it down like. Uh, a couple months later and then they'll put it up six months later and then they'll take it down and then they'll put up one season and another season and skip se- it's just so bad all right bless uh, their hearts exactly down south when i when i moved to tennessee i learned that that's could be a good thing a bad thing uh, an incredible it's thing, a bad thing or a it's go after yourself yeah, yeah. It's, how, it's the inflection oh come mm-hmm. bl- bless your heart all right so here we go bless our hearts let's get the leg started uh the leg is starting with three groups 15 minutes apart. This is like the first time that a group has actually been able to get a lead by themselves. And of course, it's right before the finale, right before like the most crucial part of the leg a season. And I'm like, oh, how do you guys feel about that right off the bat? Like the first time that a team is able to get a lead by themselves. I did not love the double up departure time, mostly because we had, if selfishly speaking, I don't love like the bunch points suck, but I think you should earn an advantage. Yes. But yes. departing with somebody, like say we came in an hour and a half ahead of somebody and then we leave at the same time. Mm. Um, I think it forces people to follow each other. I think it forces people to, uh, uh, you know, not force, like we work together on stuff because why not, right? Um, but I think many reasons to why not, (laughs) (laughs) why not, Um, but I think if I were designing it or had a chance to do it all over again, I would have just done 10 to 15 minutes and you depart on the order you came in. I knew they were trying to keep us close and they were trying to keep it. So it wasn't, you know, the eight, the eight hour difference we had in Scotland, but because we were in cars and we were self-driving, it was like easy to get in and like follow the person in front of you. So I would have, I would have, I would have loved to have the advantage of departing, um, solo, but yeah. And, and the fact that it came on this leg, are you, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? We Mm -hmm. didn't run this one leg and now we're behind. It was fine though. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. I mean, in my season, there was a time when we legit had an eight hour lead and we got to the board and with the board was 15 minute departure times and i i lost my shit i lost it i'm like we fought so hard to get this lead we're 8 hours ahead of everybody else i get to the board and now everybody's going to be 15 minutes away from each other the cameraman like i i said i'm not doing anything he was like but you 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 got you got so much time to go explore the city i'm like go yourself like leave me alone and then he just started poking and prodding me at darren i don't know if you've had darren but he was poking he's like oh you're just sitting there like a little sissy baby and i'm like <laughs> motherfucker i was like yes yeah. That was the one time like I lost my shit. Yeah, Darren is a Duke fan, so he and I came to grips. No, 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 not Bunkley, not Bunkley. Darren, the Uh, camera guy. Different Darren. Darren. Yeah, Darren is an awesome. He's he's one of the best communicators. I love him. Him, he's phenomenal. Okay, I'm glad you specified. Yeah, continue Um, on. Yes, continue. No, so uh, (laughs) so we're leaving and uh, we're heading off. Oh no! See what happens when somebody pops out. All the shits go whacked out. Whatever. Uh, now now we can't see Jen because Joey left. Uh, I'll fix that here in a second. So this day, we could start oh, here because Kim you will have to take over. This was the worst day for Kim's anxiety. And if, if you haven't watched the Holdenness Family podcast and you're watching this, you're pretty silly. You should definitely watch their podcast first. Uh, she talks a lot about her anxiety and uh, the, the stuff that she had to go through. And she had a panic. I, I've learned a lot about this because in the past six months, I've gone to see a psychiatrist for the first time. I've seen six psychologists, but this is the first psychiatrist I've been to, and I've learned a lot about myself and the reason I am the way I am. Um, so, anx- <laughs> yeah, we we have a lot of uh, of the same symptoms, to be honest. Uh, so she, Kim's anxiety took over, and she had a panic attack right before, like this this episode. The day before, the day before, and the- I had told the producers, "I'm like, I want to go home now. I'm done." And th- that's the thing about like panic is and. In my brand of anxiety, it makes no sense. We were doing really well. We were so close to the finish, but like, I literally couldn't walk. I couldn't breathe. I was like trying to like pull the hotel window off because I needed more air. And I was like, so that day in Portugal, I was so exhausted from the day before and you'll see it. Like we did not run a perfect, we did really well. But despite the fact that I was like, I, I can't do this. I'm like, I was just so, I had like a hangover from the panic attack that I was just not thinking clearly. I, you know, 
we did great. We ended up doing great and getting ahead on, a, on, on some things, but I just wasn't able to, like, if he wasn't there, spe- like specifically him, if there's anybody else, I would have forget it. Like we would have been going home during the, the pit stop that happened. Yeah. yeah. It was like on the race. I was fine. Like if I was in, if I was in motion, I was fine. You don't have time to think. Right. Like, it's the it's, sitting in between where you're trying to fill that time. And then your mind starts mm-hmm. going. Yeah. And, and it wasn't it was even, a, yeah, the, the pit stop, like even in this show, we don't spend a lot of time talking about that, but what goes down in a pit stop is, is a, a big part of, I think like the top teams, how they will do throughout the rest of the race and using that time to study or, you know, properly rest and get yourself ready. Did you guys have any kind of strategy around that or what was different in this like that there was a panic attack? Oh, okay. So for most of the race, we did have a strategy. We wanted to take some time every day to talk about what had just happened and what was going to happen just so that, you know, you guys know there's not much else to do. Um, we wanted to spend time solving puzzles, doing crosswords, like getting our brains working. We wanted to spend some time exercising, um, and just like keeping our body going So a hotel room, a little bit. Out, so yeah. Like couldn't leave the hotel room. And, and we did all of those things, but, um, th- I mean, this was, if you, um, like, I know it even like makes you anxious to even talk about this. Is it okay if I talk about the conditions that they were in? Uh, I'll like just was, say, like, I don't want to go too like, dark. I will just say it just wasn't, I was in, had nothing to do with the race. And, and so yeah. it, it was like a dark, tiny room. It's the room. I, I, we were gone at this point, like 23 days. I was really missing my kids. I think it's yeah. hard for like both parents to be gone. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm on a game show when I'm 45 years old. What am I doing? Like what, what, what is happening? And, and again, it had nothing to do with the race or how well we were doing. And it's just the anatomy of like how my brain works. But I couldn't even imagine, like, how am I going to run tomorrow? How am I going to navigate right. tomorrow? And, and you don't have to, like, honestly, you don't have to explain yourself or the condition that you ran or what was going on because anxiety just finds you sometimes, um, yeah, totally. no matter what. And there's no explanation. And once it happens, you have to deal with it. And if you're in a situation where you're understandably being quarantined, and being kept under like lock and key because of two things. One, it's the whole production side of the race, but also during this, we've got COVID, right? So there's, there's two reasons to do that. Yep. Um, it became a, 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 an emergency that involved production and production handled it appropriately. They did, it. They, did they handled it well, but I also say, so there's a lot of things I feel like I wish they show, but they're not, I understand like the, why they're not good TV. So we would get on this amazing airplane, but, you didn't know where you were going. So it had like the compass out and I had, you know, from memory drawn my map of Europe, but also you didn't know when you were racing. Mm-hmm. So like, you didn't know if you were leaving the room for a COVID test or if you were racing. So if you guys remember, like you, you guys probably before you started, you didn't know what day you were leaving. You didn't yeah. know what day. So that was the whole time. Right. So we didn't know, we didn't know where, I mean, we obviously put together that we were, when we landed, we were in Portugal, but um and in most places like in greece we didn't know what cities we were in we didn't know like we didn't i'm like which direction are my children like which <laughs> i like the comments i'm like which way is my family so that i think like builds up and and then i just like yeah. it, so by by the time you see me that day i was like i felt hungover i was like okay let's just see what happens well, people <laughs> don't understand the mental toll that this race puts on yeah. you uh the and and chemically the adrenaline is more than most people would ever experience in their life and and it's packed yeah. into 21 days because it's just 21 shots of adrenaline all it's just shots 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 i mean people shots. like people like jen are like who are oh. in their extreme sports like she may be more used to it than other people which i is was like, gonna say that's it has to is that an advantage jen like just having I mean, no, doing what you Christy do and i never we like we never felt tired we never felt because i do think wow. i don't wow. think that we realized um how much in our lives we were exposed to adrenaline granted it's a different level because like for us you know you'll have training and then you'll you'll lead up to an event. It's not like every single day is an event. And I do feel like my adrenaline was high, even at pit stops. Like I was just in race mode. I was in race mode from the first time we went to audition in LA. Like I was like competing from that moment. Um, And I feel like it never 
really turned off, but I do think it was helpful for us for how much adrenaline we'd been exposed to. But that's why you guys were such a strong team. Don't you feel like? I do think it helped. We noticed it more toward the end of the race when we were there with like really strong teams still and production is like, everybody else is feeling it. Like they're tired. And I'm like, huh? What? Yeah, every day. (laughs) Get to the hotel room. You just want tired after for many months (laughs) and other things. But yeah. And the adrenaline comes in when you're trying to paint that, when you're trying to paint the door and you're in a task and it, you're, you see other people and it just starts, starts to build. And it's like, it's just painting by numbers. No, it's not. It's your body yeah. is Honestly, chemicals. Don't you feel like they could ask you to tie your shoes? That's been my whole thing. The self-drive was the <laughs> hardest thing. And we had eight self-drive legs. You could park your car and they could ask you to tie your shoes and you, you would find a way to fuck it up. Yeah, like, no, find absolutely. Find a way to mess it up. Um, because you're like, your, your hands are shaking. And so everything was hard. Everything, everything seemed harder than in real life. You asked me to paint a door. I can paint a door. But this is uh, the biggest, the biggest advantage to having the right partner, having the right partner can change your whole race. And I think that's why you two were just perfect for each other. You guys know each other's strengths, know each other's weakness, know what ticks each other off and how to bring each other back. That was yeah. one of Diana and I's biggest uh, deficits. Like, Instead of knowing how well, to- no, I, you know, you're not giving yourself enough credit, dude. I, I think that like, so you, you, what you just said is true. It's about bringing the most out of your partner, right? So your, your strength is, is kind of being the, Hey, how you doing? I know where everything is. I know where the trains are. I'm going to be friends with you. Hey, 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 hey. Like, this, that's you and your wife, uh, your wife like abides by that. Um, and she, she also rolls her eyes while she's doing it, which yeah. is great. She also, <laughs> she also knows how, like you kind of ride the edge sometimes and she knows how to talk you off of that edge. Like, I thought you guys were a great couple. I think you guys were a, a bad breakaway from winning the race. As you know, that's what happens to most people when they do this thing. Four words. But I, I'd like, I went, no, when I watched it, I thought you guys were a great couple. It, 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 you don't have to be all schmoopy to get the most out of each other. Yeah. I'm the thing is like, she's from Philly. I'm from New York. When we, yeah, when we talk to each other, it's not like how you guys talk to each other, right? It's more of like, it's got an edge to it. It's got an edge, and it's sometimes when you both got that edge, like it just blew up in in Amsterdam, in Rotterdam, and I got so much shit for that because they only showed one side of the argument and it made it seem like I'm yelling at her and she's some sort of doormat, and I'm like, she she hits me harder than I ever hit her verbally. Well, and that's what Sherry Nakbar. That was his kind of yeah. They caught him. Dylan said it because. She, Sherry definitely stood up for herself. Like you don't mess with Sherry. I don't and look so, at her as a, a doormat. She's like intimidating. That's why it's like. No, he's- so, but, so Akbar got a little bit of smack. So it was, it, that was tough, but that's what made like Joey and Tara season. Like you, the fact that you didn't know each other. I could never, ever do yeah, Those seasons them. are fascinating. I, those, I love those seasons, seasons, but like yeah. I, to do this with somebody you don't know. No. No. You don't know when, awesome. you don't know when you can trust them because you just right. you don't know what they're good at yet. Right. Uh, I imagine the beginning half of that that season was like really weird for everybody, but yeah. I yeah. do think in that environment uh, that you would learn each other pretty quickly because it is like amazing race is not real life. It is like a very particular dynamic that you need to develop and i feel like every every team that goes on to it has to go through that learning curve in those first few episodes to figure out what's going on and then settle into yeah. what is working um, even we, yeah, we knew um, each other and we were still like I'm, those but, first few episodes. but i'm curious also like conversely i'd love to hear what joey says about this you can't really disappoint them right right <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, 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 I've disappointed plenty. Plenty of women <laughs> in your life. Uh, no, I, we had an eight, I think it was six or eight hours before our first flight. So even in the cab from the park we started at to the airport, I was like, who are you? What do you do? What yeah. Do you, yeah. And she just started rambling off all her. She was amazing. Traits, which were, just, I amazing. didn't even want to talk. Cause I'm like, I, I, you're awesome. And thank you. For <laughs> um, she was like yeah, carrying like, your I, backpack I, for you. your shit for you. Yeah, but, but just the whole way, it, it's it was fun because she's like, "Oh, we're going to Italy. I speak Italian." I'm like, "Wait, you just said you spoke Portuguese." She's like, she speaks all these languages, yeah, and because I was in the military and she was in the military, we're kind of used to just getting thrown together and having to perform a task, a rather important task with a complete stranger, and you just have to have that trust. 
I it was fun to watch some of the other teams, especially the younger teams. Uh, team fun who didn't really have that dynamic and like people who never traveled like London and Logan who right. just never really left their little places kind of just to watch them just stare at each other like I, I don't know they, there was not a lot of communication <laughs> there and yeah it was just as you went on you just found more and more it was it was really like a social experiment though yeah. mm-hmm. you didn't know there was no talk of like politics or this or that it was like okay you have a family I have a family let's go do this yeah <laughs> That's, yeah all right, so let's let's get into it, and then we'll get into more of this really cool stuff that I, stuff that I really enjoy talking about. All right, so Raquel and Kayla get out uh, 15 minutes before Kim and Penn and Rude and Natalia. Ryan and Dusty are a half hour behind the lead team, but there's a 27 mile drive, which should take about 41 minutes for some people. Uh, other people took over an hour, as you can tell by how teams caught up and kind of went past each other. And that seems like some of these legs were kind of designed almost as linear, but turned out to be like the driving and the navigation and the finding yeah. the little things just started to change the placements so much this season. Uh, more well, than that was it. Yeah. That was its own roadblock and its own detour and its own challenge was just the driving. It was. So the driving, um, like just, just to give you some perspective on, because everyone has a couple of self drives. Think about the fact that when they did the restart of the race, they went to less populated areas and less touristy areas less lower transmission areas. It it was all to to prevent COVID transmission, which by the way, they succeeded, which is amazing. But you you know, you go to a place sometimes in the amazing race and there's like some sort of like English, more like easier way to understand how to turn or do something. And there's more people who speak uh, English. And so like places like Thessaloniki were there, like all of the letters were lowercase Greek, like no one could understand it. Lisbon was a little bit closer because people do go to Lisbon, but there was, there were a lot of countries where self-driving was almost impossible. I think Lisbon was easier. Greece was a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. That that was almost like Asia. Sorry. Yeah. It's almost like is is not the same. Cause like even just when the alphabet is the same, you can kind of discern, right. You know, this is kind of close, but yeah, that's tough. Yeah. So teams must drive themselves to Fortaleza de San Felipe, where they will find the next clue from atop the uh, the Fortaleza. There, you have to look down and find a flag, which is it wasn't meant to be a hard task. It's just no. it's just rather than going to look at you know Socrates and his crazy eyes, you just go to this oh, place and look guy. and. and and look at so her. much mess. Like, um, so no, sorry. That guy, that guy was like, awesome. Was like, Tell me just, more about you, sir. We I did like I, you. I, like as an actor, I thought he made really good, brave Bold choices. Choice. Like I thought he was a good athlete. Yeah, like, he yeah. definitely leaned into the role. But I was like, what does this guy really do? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was fascinated, but I was like, we got to go now, but I want to yeah. circle but, back yeah, with you. So, so, so Justin, it, it, you're right. It was easy. The The main challenge was getting from there to the flag with no directions. You just had to eyeball it and figure out how to get there. Yeah. And I, and I was like, the, the, even the, the whole outlook was just like drabish colors, like very dull colors. And that was just bright right there. But it was like, okay, I see it. Now can I get there? And as you saw from Ryan and Dusty, they couldn't quite get there as fast when as other teams. On the, yeah. When you're on that. So we... <laughs> beat the girls there because we saw the city on a map and our theory was always to like find just get to the city and then ask for directions Mm -hmm. so we got there really quickly yeah um and then i kind of was like okay if we go to the yellow buildings go too far because once you're driving on the round you can't see the flag because the flag wasn't taller than the buildings so if you didn't look for the buildings you weren't going to see the flag yeah you've always had that because of your orienteering or whatever things that you took that you know that you should always have a landmark that's before and a landmark that's after, which most people, mm-hmm. it sounds like common sense, but if you don't think that way, it's not common sense. And most mm-hmm. teams don't think that way. Um, but here, I, well, how do you feel about being warned about two roadblocks before the leg starts? I appreciate the warning, but if I'm a producer, I don't know if I'm doing that. <laughs> like, <laughs> how do yeah. you guys, Jen, how do you feel about something like that? Yeah, I think I... I don't know. I think it changes your decision making, which, um, you know, I, it's still weird. So James Earl mentioned how out of balance, uh, in particular, Raquel and Kayla's roadblocks were. I think they ended up like seven and four or something. Well, they reset after the. Yeah. Every, everybody evened out after after after, after the first three legs, it became even and everybody was four three going in. I still think that's weird. It is. But 
that's fine. Um, but yeah, I think it changes your decision making. So I probably wouldn't have. I would have preferred not knowing and been surprised by it. But yeah, I don't like when they give you too much information going in. I like that you have to figure stuff out and get surprised along the way. Um, I appreciated it, but yeah. <laughs> so uh, one of the best parts of this, I think, just kind of got overlooked. Raquel wanted to drive down the stairs like she was in a movie. She literally legit asked, "Can I drive down the no. stairs?" Like. This the was Italian like the Italian job. job there. I was like, if, if they had like yeah. those, those little cars, they may have been like, go Mini for Mini Coopers. Mini yep. Coopers. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yep. I, need, I could text her and find out if she was serious or just joking. Because you can never She was really dead serious. There she was, was 100% dead there serious. There was no inflection of jokeness in her voice. Yeah. No. no Raquel, I'm telling you, the self drives are hard and it did things to your brain. So, uh, she's a smart girl. They, uh -huh. they get a little lost and then they see uh, Kim and Penn leaving the lookout point as they're heading up, uh, up there. So, uh, Kim and Penn just go uh look for it and then uh they i like that you guys just went for it you didn't stop you just trusted who you were you trusted that navigation was your strength and you went for it and it paid off made up 15 minutes really quick for, for something like that um dusty is a little testy in the car like he always is uh he, he calls uh he's saying that you guys are lambs for the slaughter uh, you guys are so Lion nice to lions and lambs for the slaughter and we're like, you should work we, at a zoo. we had to like google what a cape buffalo I was it said cake buffalo. yeah we I'm thought like, it was cake horns. buffalo it's a <laughs> it's, yeah, like, it's, <laughs> he so he's just dusty's got very colorful language and i think it's um I, I'm glad they used a lot of it because I, I, I mean, he's, he's a he mentioned lady. wanting to break things off inside of us, yeah. like at some point. <laughs> or like this. You guys are so nice when you talk about people who are literally talking about like destroying you as humans, like because like, oh, okay. he's all he's, he's he's a great guy. He's a great guy. <laughs> he, he does. He's not actually going to break something off inside of me. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. I think the adrenaline hits him a little differently than it hits most people. <laughs> like the adrenaline. Yes. Yes. As my daughter would yeah. say. <laughs> no. uh, so Dusty says they're lambs and uh, he's about to feast uh, and uh, he's very excited about that. Uh, I don't want to bring him in. <laughs> oh, so Ryan and Dusty eventually catch up to Raquel and Kayla and Arun and Natalia at that lookout point. So pretty much everybody got bunched up. So they caught their half yep. hour up and you guys caught your 15 minutes up because Raquel and Kayla had some issues. Uh, but Ryan and Dusty, uh, as confident as they are, are, the only team that goes left and fall behind in last place. As it every was hard. It was hard to spot because you couldn't see the flag from the ground. But Kim, that. so Kim, I'm just going to give you props when she, uh, when you don't see stuff on the actual show. She was, uh, she was eyeballing this yellow building, giant yellow building that was right next to the flag that you could see the entire time. That. Mm -hmm. That's how we got there. If you hadn't ID'd that, then maybe yeah. it would have been harder. Yeah, that that it's those little things, and that's why, like, if you've watched every episode, I give you the damn super fan award because you pick up <laughs> on all the little things. And there's another thing, another reason that I think that we're so much alike as well that I never thought about until you've mentioned it like three times that we're both producers, so we see things from a producer's aspect and seeing things. It's like, okay, what would I do as a producer? And that's how I made my. Uh, yeah. My my uh, auditions, my audition, my my proposal. I thought like a producer. I use my producer skills, and I'm like, what can I do to force them to cast me on this show? I want to be on this show. How can I force them to do it? I'm going to make the best amazing race proposal that there's ever been, and it's going to go viral. And that's my thought before it happened, and I did, and I kind of forced them to put me on the show. And it's it, amazing. And then, uh, the, being the producer screwed me though a couple times. Oh, and Thessaloniki, uh, I'm pretty sure Pat did this on purpose. He put a bunch of uh, GoPro, GoPro cameras around the rocks. the rocks, and so the first place she started looking was the GoPro cameras. I went around the GoPro, which cameras, I which I would have done too. Yeah, and they weren't there. The rocks weren't there. Yeah. There's, a, there's a reason so, there's well, a GoPro well camera. I mean, yeah. well, and like, they probably didn't even yeah. have batteries on them. They, yeah. were like, <laughs> they were made of plastic. Like they weren't GoPros. Yeah, yeah. They were like schmo pros. <laughs> no pro. All right. So who wants yeah. to go exploring? So uh, teams must uh, figure out some famous uh, e explorers. And there's some famous names here. If, if you just took some time to look at it, there was one name, Vasco da Gama, that pretty much stands out because it's so unique. But there was another, there was Magellan, which people didn't pick up on. It was spelled in Portuguese. Portuguese. It was, yeah. but yes, yes, uh, I, 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 I didn't pick up on that. It, I was the it was, one it language was that I like know. like Maga Blaga or something. Yeah. Like it was, it didn't look. A L H. Tara could have got it. Tara could have got it. Yeah. Yep. And, Can uh, I ask some questions about this challenge? Get it. Because it, it didn't look like 
and it might have just been the way that it was edited, but it didn't look like people went down the line to like look at all the names before getting in a boat. It looked Kim like, didn't. So <laughs> she did not. So here, flags, some of them had flags and some of them didn't, though. They all had flags. Oh, they did had, they? Okay. Yeah, they all had flags because you had to choose from that line. Um, so there were every single boat had a flag. There were eight names. So you would go in and out of boat. So, Jen, I explained my like brain hangover. And I was like, honestly, just get me through the day. It wasn't even like, let's make the top three. I'm like, just get me through the day. So I was the first one out. I was reading the clue as I ran. I, I was thinking what I should have done, what I should have done is we were in this pier and you hear me going like, I'm screwing this up. I'm screwing this up. There were people like mill around when you see amazing yeah. cameras. I should have run up to one of the dudes and said, Hey, point to a Portuguese explorer and then run back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is what I should have done. Um, yeah. Instead, I was wondering why people didn't ask people because I wouldn't have known. I would have I, known zero. I knew India. Bartholomew Diaz and Vasco da Gama, but I didn't walk. I'm telling you, hand to God, did not step in a single boat. I knew to look on the back. Uh -huh. I went down. I'm like, I just want to take the shortest trip. So I went down to the end of the pier and I picked the prettiest boat. Nice. I, I looked at the end and I saw a name, and this is true. As we were navigating the little street, I recognized that name. So on a street, on a right. street, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a street named after this person that was Portuguese for Magellan, and I was like, "Let's do it, f it, this is amazing race. Yeah. Let's just figure it out." And, and so, yeah, it took the worst strategy ever. <laughs> it took seven, <laughs> maybe six minutes from the time we got there because she went onto the pier, and I was like, "I'm gonna go." poopy in the potty um because there was a bathroom <laughs> over there you gotta go, you gotta go. And there was and no I mattress was around in a rush i was like i'm just gonna you know make sure everything's taken care of down there Jesus, Mary and um Jesus. and uh you know it was a nice clean bathroom and i got out and she was getting the clue <laughs> and i was like crap i gotta hurry up so like yeah it was i was a little uh, disappointed how had to wait for me to get out of the I bathroom know, he like was walking up and i was like i got it <laughs> Let's okay, let's go. go. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was all like a newspaper and a hero. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Cup of coffee. Yeah. Oh, Calvin and Hobbs, you are incorrigible. Yeah. <laughs> like, just like sitting there chilling out. That was the finally. worst strategy ever. What you should. So Raquel, Raquel, yeah, because I, I was already wrong. She goes, Raquel's like, where are their names? I'm like, the names are on the back of the boat. So you see her, he, she walks up and down them. But what you should have done and what everybody else who, if there was only two people left, so there's only two correct boats left, go on the other side. You have a clear vision of the end of the boat. Ask somebody if you're in shore and yeah. then run in. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And it didn't seem like you had to row that far, which I was a little disappointed. I, like, I want like to see. Yeah, it was to the end of the marina. Like, well, if I could yeah. do it. It yeah. was fine. I mean, like the Ryan was farther, farther away. The bathroom is farther away. <laughs> <laughs> how do you not, how do you I got more of a workout in that boat. one than you did. <laughs> Ryan lapped. Road block. Ryan lapped a rune <laughs> twice. Like a rune was yeah. paddling in the wrong direction. There was people sitting. Like Raquel is sitting in the wrong direction, but she's paddling in the right direction. But she's going forward instead of rowing backward. And but I mean, it works. Yeah. She got it done. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, so, so <laughs> A room Here's should have just swam. He should have swam with the boat behind him and dragged it. So we thought of, he thought about at the end, he's like to get, cause he recognized Vasco da Gama. And then I think he said it out loud. So then I think Ryan heard it. Maybe I could be wrong about that. Yeah. He, the, the question was, should he have jumped in and pulled his boat in? I will I, say I like he, Arun has lived a fascinating life yeah. and he works <laughs> so hard. He when, doesn't. When does this man ever yeah. have the opportunity to be in a boat? He, he also right? doesn't I, listen. I disagree. To, Kim. Yeah. I disagree. I, Maybe captaining a ship, I get it. But <laughs> rowing a boat is general physics. Pointy end goes the way you want. You see, I, how, how many movies have you seen? We he did, doesn't watch you know, movies. On Golden Pond, something. <laughs> on like, Golden Pond. So on <laughs> Arun doesn't watch movies. He doesn't listen to music. He watches TV reality shows. That is he his doesn't listen to his backseat driver either, his navigator. Um, so, oh. that, yeah, that whole thing is Bless. interesting. So Arun, we, we all watched the finale together. He came up to me during the commercial and he goes, I'm about to look like a caricature. <laughs> and and I, was like, what? I was like, what do you mean? He goes, I just start screaming, that's my boat. <laughs> Enough. They showed the whole thing. I was like right next to him, laughing oh, my ass off. Him. Yeah, he's he's the sweetest guy. He is. He definitely yeah, and is. I, I love him. I do. I love oh, yeah. him. I, do. I know. And, and it, it's tough to watch for sure. And like, 
And I will say, like, where I'm gonna do, like, he was where he is. It was tough to kind of turn the boat around. Yeah, there's no excuse. Like, the end, there's no <laughs> excuse. One oar turns it in a circle. Dude, worst case, <laughs> take an oar and paddle it like it's a canoe. Like you would just yeah, he's so a, off. <laughs> but you he was. Think, you'd think he was rocking the Queen Mary. Awesome. I swear to God, he was fun to watch. <laughs> It was yeah. fun, and I, I love them, but I, you're going on the amazing race. Try to learn how to drive a stick if you can. It's just general thing. Yeah. And he says he's a super fan. Yeah. I know. There's I always some rowing or paddling of some yeah. sort. Well, he did like he did know a lot about the structure and the bones of the race, and he he kind of could figure out like what what the cadence is for these things. Like he he knew a lot about the Amazing Race, and he knows a lot about a lot of other reality shows. But I guess it's the the kind of physical. Um, tasks and cultural tasks that go with it yeah um that but i mean look he made they made it to the final four somehow. absolutely yeah raquel right, yeah, come, oh, I, I, like, just stop somehow. raquel joey shut up raquel All nailed right. it uh she know bartholomew diaz i wouldn't have known that one but she was paddling the boat backwards she made it work she she didn't really have too many issues arun lots of issues he finally found the boat that he wanted Ryan lapped him, got out, got in another boat, lapped him again, and he's still like in the same exact position as you see Ryan and Dusty run by. He's in the same position he was when he got in the boat. I just, <laughs> I just have to I have to say this. I just dawned on me. My partner rode a boat with her fucking feet I know. <laughs> on, on a river with a <laughs> cool. current. Yeah. It was, I had a current. Like if you didn't row, you'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really good recreation of that. Yeah, that really should have worked for yeah. that. No, and that I was, was I was like, yeah. what are you doing? I even tried it. I couldn't, but yeah, it's there's no excuse. If you're a super fan, you've got to know how to row. Something. Yes. All Bless right. his heart. Bless his <laughs> heart. So let's uh, let's <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go down and and, fi and figure out what's going on here. Where we go to the next root info, which is 27 miles away, should take a. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, teams must make their way on foot to uh, to let's go paint some doors. You had to pick yourself a, a nice little sardine can, and you had to paint yourself a door. And it seemed like some of them were pretty e pretty easy to recognize. Uh, that they're very difficult to to do, and others, yeah, and others looked like they were going right. to be very hard with lots of detail and curvy lines. And the super yeah. fan of yeah. Kim really let me down this time. Like you picked uh, one of the hardest ones. I my brain, I was hungover, and I was like, "Ooh, I like mermaids." I'm telling you, this leg, my brain. I was just we were not. It was, there's not a lot, the snapsies were not firing. The snapsies were not firing. <laughs> I, I thought, I thought y'all did pretty good because you didn't have a lot of small color changes like Ryan and Dusty did. They had like a lot yeah. of tiny little yeah. well, the, we, the only mistake we made was Raquel and Kayla's was the easiest one. Yes, that was clearly. the one. That, that, it was them, and then credit, everything else was said, was harder. Which one is the easiest one? And they they did. I'm I'm throwing this out to you, Justin, for another super fan contender besides yes. Kim. I, I, I have it written down. Kim didn't do much super fanny stuff this leg. She was I not. She was, the super fan was out the window this leg. Legs. I really sucked. Yeah. Stand by for the finale. <laughs> yes, yes. You still got second when you feel like you were running the leg hungover, though, does speak volume to how strong of a team you guys are. I think. Yes, and for those of you who, who don't uh, – who like, oh, but they didn't have to paint their doorknobs. Uh, uh, yes, the, everybody kind of painted their doorknobs. Kim and Penn, I actually have a photo behind Jen, uh, so I'm going to black you out for a second, Jen. Please don't take this the wrong way. Uh, I just want to show people the photo uh, of uh, – there's the, the boats. Okay, so this is Kim and Penn's door, okay? And Kim and Penn's door have uh, uh, lines, okay? So here is the, here's the lines you have to fill in. And the line goes over the back of the doorknob, not the front of the doorknob. It goes over the little round edge, right? And then if you go back, you look, it's actually painted purple, or, and they go around it. They painted within their lines. They kept their lines. Whereas Ryan and Dusty, uh, here's Raquel and Kayla, they don't have any lines around their doorknob, so they don't have to paint it at all. Here is the best shot that I could find of the doorknob, but you see this is clearly within the lines that Ryan and Dusty had to paint. 
within those lines. That's why they're the only ones that had to paint their complete doorknob because it was the Especially only. Especially if you look at the can and you see that that color is filled I, in. I yeah. have to like, say, I can't, I would not have known to paint a doorknob. Like, when do you ever paint a doorknob? Correct. I would, I would not have painted that doorknob. And it, I would have. When do you row with your feet? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I think. Well, I, the amazing I, race. <laughs> yeah, on the amazing race. But I would not. It, I think Ryan is so calm and yeah. he could zoom out and like. The kind of, you see him look at the camera, like, if this is it, I'll be pissed. I would not, I've never, I would not have figured out to paint that doorknob. So. Yeah. Well, I think Kim, I think you, you don't give yourself enough credit. I think one of you would have figured that out. Maybe Penn with the, the, the all right, this doesn't look right. This doesn't look right. No, out. I said, I think I might. <laughs> yeah. And There's I, a lot of stuff you figured out in this race. Okay. Absolutely. Oh. And, and we'll definitely get to the, the all-star that you are a little bit later. Uh, so teams must then drive themselves. Uh, the road, who's down for the count? All right, let's figure it out. They had to go 27 miles, which take another 43 minutes, which could be the advantage that Kim and Penn needed to, to get back on their, their horse and get back into first place, get a little bit of advantage. Uh, the team member who sat out of the other roadblock has to do this one. Uh, so boom, Penn is up. He's ready to step up, but he didn't bring the right goggles for this event. He oh my gosh! <laughs> I had, no, I did. I had every single pair of glasses possible. Um, so first of all, we were there. I, just to, oh I need gosh. to say how good Kayla was in this moment. I want to brag about her. We were there at least thirty minutes ahead of them. Yeah. So wow. because we didn't, we didn't stop for directions. We spotted it on the map. Mm. And once we got to the town, there were signs because it's a huge landmark. So we never had to stop for directions. We got there, yeah, like right away. I don't know if it was thirty, but it was a lot. It was no, a long time. It was time. a long time. Yeah. And um, bec- and to make, and I'll let you explain the task in a second. But to keep in mind, to make the guess, you had to go a quarter mile down yes. and a quarter mile up. So it's a half mile right. for every guess. Kayla joined me on my seventh guess Oof. and the reason the reason i was doing seven guesses what had happened what was happened? um i didn't get lasik no like i really want to get lasik surgery now it was really it was annoying so I, it, you're just it, they turned into blurs that i think there were i mean there were 106 right and i think there were it was a weird number that they didn't it, it wasn't like they had 53 on each side one of the sides was longer than the other so you couldn't just count it and double it right so you had to go down and do it on both sides and um, I, like I would get to 40 each times on both sides. And then I'm like, I, I just saw blurs. I didn't see anything after that. So I got the, I got the number I thought it was. And then I just went, I think I guess 110 first. I went down, up, down, up, down, up. So I went 110, 109, 111, 108. One, I didn't even count again because I counted three times. And every time I got 110, and I was just like, eventually I'm going to get this if I keep going back and forth. And I was on my seventh guess and Kayla goes down there She's like, do, 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 when I was like, and <laughs> nails it. It just runs right past me. <laughs> um, oh, I, uh, people are asking in chat and I have to show you this. All right, I'm sorry. I, I put you up next to me, Jen, but here's another photo of what was left behind. They left behind their map and the old route info clue. Okay. Oh, the only yeah. thing you ever need to check into a mat is your passport. You can leave everything else in the trash. You can leave your clothes, your backpack. You can leave the car. The only thing that you need to check in is your passport. And the good thing about this is this is the old route info. If this would be the current route info, they would want to go back and get it because they would need to know where the hell they're going. And the map, they could just leave the map. Uh, but this right. is what was left behind right here. And you don't need that to check in. You don't get a penalty for it. There's no, all that stuff that I saw on Twitter, like stop. You don't get a penalty for that. There's nothing wrong with not having that piece of paper except your law, lack of information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You got that? You get a 30 minute penalty for taking the wrong boat like I did. But you don't, if you, if you, if you don't do the thing correctly, you can get a 30 minute penalty, but for leaving it behind, you don't get any penalty. All right. So Penn has bad vision. He starts uh, at 112 <laughs> and he goes back and forth and back and forth. Eventually, at eight tries later, he does get it. But some strategies that I wanted to throw out there that may have worked. What about the, the curve, the little curve above that, that obviously yeah, the arch left that. to two? Yep. So you, did you count that and just multiply by two? That didn't help? Sure did. Sure did. But then at the end, yeah, I did. Like, I, yeah. When the left side was really shadowy and dark. So by the end of it, it was all really dark. And so and that's another thing that I, like on TV, you don't really get perspective on because they have zoom lenses and it's high def. It was really 
like shadowy and dark. I'm about to blow y'all's mind here. You ready? (laughs) One, two, he can count three. So well, I can do this honestly. Four, five. I can go like in the background until this podcast is over. (laughs) Eleven, twelve. I like my son would be proud. I know, but to your point, there were like little sconces above. There were lights. There were all these things, and I was like. Those little window right. I'm like, but then the windows weren't consistent. They weren't every 10. They weren't every gotcha. 20. So I like it was it was my own private hell. And um, it, and I'm also like I went to see a doctor before I left. They're like, this is pretty much how good your shitty eyes are going to be until you and your shitty eyes die. Uh, like you can't like you're too old to get this surgery and like everything else. Like oh, just no. deal with it. I, was, I highly uh, yeah. recommend LASIK. It changed my life. I had astigmatism and my depth perception was so screwed. I got LASIK before the show and I was uh, 2010 vision. <laughs> um, I should pray. Yeah, I'm freaked out. It. I'm totally freaked. I'm talking about Ray about it in chat and I, I had 2020 vision and now I use my 499 Home Depot specials. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, dad. but I'll laser in the eye. I'm, gonna, I'm freaked out about it. It literally, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It takes 10 seconds. It That's takes outrageous. 10 seconds and you don't feel a damn thing. You just see the little bloop. And then as soon as they close it, you could see perfectly. And then but, but when it starts to heal, that's like, when you have like, to cover it. For like old guys like me who just lost their vision over time still? I got it when I was 30 something. Like, yeah, I think once you get in your 40s, they look I at you like, like you're like, a lost I, cause. They look yeah, see, I, I could see until I was 45. I could see perfectly. Yeah, oh, no. so, shit. Kayla comes this in with her. They, they were the same person with well, us. This I, is I happening. Can't yeah. actually, if, I recommend if, it. If Kim we, can't see either, by the I way. I can't see anything. So if we, if this were my roadblock, we would still be there. I'd still be counting. <laughs> well, I, I'd have leaned in on Kayla, though, for sure. I'd have been like, mm-hmm. uh, so <laughs> Kayla with her young eyes and her glasses nails it on her first try. But somehow they get lost on the way to the lighthouse, which gives Kim and Penn a little time. They see them. They see them, but they're not the prowlers that Ryan and Dusty are. They don't see the right. water buffalo like we- ready to jump on them. <laughs> it was close. It was actually pretty. It was like we were we were within about a couple of hundred, maybe like a hundred feet of each other at the finish line. Um, so they, um, they, there was, and there was fog rolling in. And so the path was blocked. So they actually took what looked like a direct route, but they would have had to go all the way down and like climb up a mountain to get there. And we took a, the direct route, but even then they were, they were enough ahead of us that um, there, we weren't going to. There is an overhead shot, uh, Jen. I, I love you. Uh, there is an overhead <laughs> shot uh, uh, right here. If you look in the far right here, right above that white, uh, building that's Kim and Penn. You could see them in the same shot, so it wasn't just like fake drama. They're right there, Kim and Penn are right behind them. They were close enough that uh, they could maybe catch them if there was a you know Olympic athletes or something. Uh, you know, but it didn't. If we can catch them, I was like, baby, no, we can't. <laughs> no, I'm we sorry. can't. <laughs> <laughs> so they come in first place. They get their second first place back to back. Second, uh, but that doesn't matter. You just want to get to the finale at this point. First place is it's nice, and they got a trip to to St. Lucia, which yeah. was the the best trip me and Diana ever took of any trip we've ever seen in our entire life. St. Lucia is the most incredible place you've ever visited, uh, and they're going to be staying at the same place that the Bachelor stood at when they went to um, St. Lucia. Fun fact: um, hmm. the Jade Mountain Don't Resort. Forget Cape Cod. Cape Cod. Don't forget Cape Cod. Cape, Cape Cod. Cod. No, for, hey. <laughs> We're more likely to do that than Turkey at this point. Oh, there's no way. Yeah, yeah we can talk about that fake. Gotta go to Turkey. It's such oh, a not place. right now. We go to Cape Cod. <laughs> but so here's the thing. Kim's always wanted to go to Turkey. <laughs> she didn't even know where it was on a map. Kids looked at me. They're like, you've never once in your life mentioned Turkey. What Name a problem? city in Turkey. Go. No, um, no but Cape, my best friend lives in Cape Cod. So I was like, oh, like I can go to <laughs> Turkey. So everybody's like, you got really excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm mean, actually proud that you got excited about that. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's like, you'll enjoy a round of golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were you did that mom excitement, like, oh, that's such a pretty picture you painted. What the hell is it? Uh, have you know, <laughs> so Kim, Kim actually makes a noise when she gets a Christmas present that sucks. Her eyes get really big and she goes, Ooh. <laughs> like, is that you know that you screwed up your present? <laughs> uh, I don't want to, I don't want to skimp out on Natalia. She nailed it on her first try as well, according to what we saw yep. on television. And uh, I actually don't. I don't think she did. According she did. to what we saw on television, and it was a point a point <laughs> six sorry. mile run. We're giving her credit, okay? We love her. Around here. No, Natalia and Arun. If this was not, if this were a different season, 
and it, it was getting in cabs and cars, it's a different discussion. Yeah, they, they would have been out pass. third, and they would have never got a second chance to come back. Right. So, <laughs> and they would also, the odds of getting like history. 16 non-elimination legs wouldn't have happened yeah. either. So, all right, so it was a .6 mile run, for those of you who wanted to know, uh, according to Google Maps, is .6 miles, uh, and uphill, downhill, and there was a second route to go that... Uh, uh, that led to a dead end, which is where uh, Raquel and Kayla went. And I'm not going to. I love hearing how, like, he knows all the distances. It's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I tried. It's almost, it's almost creepy, Penn. It's, it's. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Well, is it a bit much? There's 23 He's... podcasts about this season because Kim and Penn are on it, so everybody wants to uh, cover it. But uh, true. so I have to do something to stand out. So He's my... doing this, for, Penn. He's doing this from your garage. <laughs> I know where you are. Uh... <laughs> I made some salmon for dinner. Just make sure you wrap it up. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you. we'll have some locks <laughs> in the morning. I, I'm a vegetarian, but thank you. Uh, ah. All right, so uh, that ends that leg, and you know it's the leg that uh, Arun and Natalia finally don't uh, catch a non-elimination, and they are gone for the second time. Well, only the second team, right? Uh, well, now third team. Well, second team. Yeah, we'll get to that. Second team to, to ever be eliminated twice. This is not twice. your best moment, Justin. Yeah, it's the second team. That I was going to make a joke, <laughs> but I know Arun, Arun watches the show. I don't want to. I don't want to no, rub I, it in I, anymore. I, I've done that before. It's the worst feeling. Like when, you can't go um, what you're going to like stay out of your yeah. brain. Because we all watched it together. Yeah, I like they, him a lot. When they were finally eliminated, like everybody stood up and clapped. It was like a really sweet, sweet moment. And they were, you know, they were. It was fun to be with them. Yeah. That's great. But for, for people who want regular people on the show, uh, th there's a lots of regular people on this season. Regular people normally don't make the best racers. Like you saw the cops, they're cops. They just happen to have a, a, a song that went viral. They went on Ellen, but they're still cops. They're just not the best racers. You know, like Akbar and Sherry, they're just teachers who do incredible things. Yeah, they got on Ellen, but they're just teachers at the end of the day. They're regular people. Again, not great racers. And then it's like, oh, but I don't want internet personalities because they're just special. Like, no, you're just a mom and dad who happen to be super fans and know how to produce great like content that people want to watch. You're regular people who are super fans, and that's why you did great on the race. It had nothing to do with being, you know, a YouTuber or being oh, uh, internet personalities. Like, you guys are. It's like it's like on my season. Like, I I was le legit a forty year old dude and. Two 20 year olds were, were, were like after me the whole time, but I somehow became the bad guy. Like, if this was in the street and two 20 year olds were picking on me, like, you'd feel sorry for me. It's like, oh, it's this old guy getting picked on by two 20 year olds, but because I beat them up, then I'm the bad guy. But whatever. Uh, I, I, we appreciate the uh, uh, people like you are exactly what the race is all about. Like, well, uh, I thank you for saying I, well, I, I think people like you are what the race is all about. Yeah. Like, I, like I, I think, I think the bad guys, like, I, I tuned in to watch you. Yeah. And but, I, will, sorry, I, was, well, I was just going to say, I know, like I, I, I joined, like there's like this amazing race fan Facebook page. And I made sure not to follow anybody on socials before, because I didn't want to like tip anybody off that we were on it. Um, and they're like, I hate just the YouTubers. I was like, but can't YouTubers be fans of the show? Yeah. Like we, like when you, if you went like side by side, it, like it, like Arun and I were doing amazing race trivia in the back of the plane. So like, it just like, because of, if I had said we worked in marketing yeah, in the beginning, hate you they're jealous yeah that's basically uh, it, what it is. They hate themselves well, here's the it thing well so i think jo I joey's close i think i think that I'm the yeah sorry you have to be quiet Jen's oh, okay. sorry i was gonna say the truth is that they're making a television show and people who do go viral on the internet or who do have youtube channels are fun and engaging people to watch so it's like it's it's really hard like people want regular people to be casted um but it's just it it changes the dynamic like i don't know i think but youtubers it, are regular people yeah listen yeah. They're regular people. And anybody who's ever told you as an adult that they want your kid to go and start a business and be an entrepreneur, like the stupidest thing you could do is start a restaurant. 50% of restaurants are could fail within the first five years and more than that fail in the first 10 years. I know because my dad had one. My brother has one. My other brother has one. I understand that. To be an entrepreneur these days is to be a digital entrepreneur. Less money to start and then you have to put the effort in. And if you understood how hard it is to be a content creator that gets any sort of notoriety then you would respect these modern day entrepreneurs doing things that they were taught, not taught to do, they're self-taught how to do, like to, to write, produce, edit, promote, and do it on a consistent basis and put yourself 
out there. You're putting yourself out there for the world to see the, the criticism that you get on a daily basis from idiots on the internet. It's so different than somebody writing a review about your restaurant. Like it, you, you don't understand how hard it is to be a modern day entrepreneur. Trust me, I would love to be a content creator on a regular basis. It's the discipline it takes to do it consistently is way harder than cooking a fucking steak or making a damn burger and having somebody come to your place. Like it's not hard to sell a shirt. Like I don't understand why somebody has so much more respect I, for somebody who owns a retail store or a restaurant than it is to, to create content on a regular basis. Well, Sorry. Thank rant you, over. Thank you. No, no. Thank you for that. I, I appreciate it. I, I will say that um, just like based on my father's reaction when we became Internet influencers, I think he saw that we put out a video. It got millions of views and we became like instantly sort of overnight recognizable to some people. And that might be the luck slash jealousy that comes from it to say that, OK, you got this through no real work. It was by fortune of some sort of algorithm that happened. Um, and if that was it and we had just done that and hung our hat on it for the rest of our lives, I think I would understand some of that animosity. Um, the truth is, and thank you for saying it, Justin, we do we, like we work our butts off on a regular basis. And we learn that by cutting our teeth in local news where we made, you know, two or three stories a day. We edited our own stuff and we shot our own stuff. And so really, you know, we just kept doing doing that over and over and over again. Um, and so, but, but, but do I do, I do understand the feeling that people have, particularly who have worked hard yeah. their entire lives and then see someone who's successful where it seemingly doesn't look like they did much. And if it does look, look effortless, what we do, that's great, but it's not. I think <laughs> it's, the problem also people yeah. is they think it's like so self-promoting when it comes down to it, like I'm a huge introvert, which is why my favorite part of what we do is behind the scenes. Yeah. Like I would rather not be on TV. I'd rather not. Like I love creating. I love writing. I love the act of creating a video out of nothing. This would be awesome if we're just talking to you guys and it's not even on, if it's not, not even on YouTube, YouTube this would be so just as fine. Why, that's yeah. like my struggle. So when, but I think people's problem with it is it looks so self promotional. And I get that because it's super cringy. But Gordon Ramsay's restaurant's name is Gordon. It doesn't get more self promotional than Emerald Lugasi. Bam. Like it, well, that's okay for them to self promote, but not some, some <laughs> mom and dad. Like, it goes, I mean, it's, it goes, it's Sorry. true. Because yeah, if you had a business that was like a tangible entity that you were promoting on behalf of, which essentially is what as an influencer, you're creating a brand that has a certain value prop that people appreciate. Right? Like they watch you. They're you're not like making them be there. People want to see you, they want to hear your perspective, they they want that. So yeah. Anyway, all right. Let's, we can keep talking. Yeah, let's get into the awards. Do we have <laughs> awards sorry. for this for this episode? No problem. We'll we'll move on and get in that and get back into that at the end because I have a tremendous amount of respect for what you do. So uh, Jen, do you have a, a, a love out loud moment here for this episode? I went with a laugh out loud. Okay. And it is going through a rune. <laughs> he took my boat. He took my boat. He took my boat. He took my boat. Took my boat. Um, God bless you. I, Safe. I also, like, my heart kind of broke because I'm like, oh, he's having this moment where he, like, he is actually doing the task. He's like, I know that that's an explorer. And now I didn't realize when wa watching it that you could only see the names on the end. So now I'm realizing he got in the boat and then he could see all of the names for wow. the first time. And the poor guy can't row back fast enough to get in his mm, boat his um, boat but it was a really entertaining moment for me and yeah. i enjoyed it and i enjoyed arun and italia on the race yes uh joey what do you got here do you have some advice for the lovers out there some relationship advice yes i do oh, that's um, it's my favorite part of the podcast <laughs> this is, this is, yeah this is just gold um i'm gonna give it to arun because wow. i and, and, and Kim and Penn, you know this. At, when we did our thing at the beginning of the year, I saw two blips of one second, and I'm like, Penn's a goof, don't like him. And I was the first one to admit it the very next week how wrong I was. And I said it that, and Arun has been bearing the brunt of me and my opinions, which don't mean shit, we for know. the whole season. <laughs> and I reached, someone on social media reached out to me and was like, you can't say that about uh, Kim and Penn because blah, blah. I go, listen. I have like 400 followers. They have 4 million. My opinion doesn't matter for shit. And then, so it reminds me Arun, so much. at the end of, throughout this whole thing, he was concerned about his daughter, which his daughter. I, I'm a dad. My children, I just love them. They're to death. I would do anything for them. For him to 
I could see it in this final leg of his race that he did this entire thing for his daughter and it was very beautiful to watch. So Arun, I really, really enjoyed you on the race. I, Natalia, congratulations to your wedding. Arun, you were awesome. You got me to talk about you and your story and everything else. I love you. I think you're great. He really is the best. And, and in person, their dynamic is just like it. It was on television. It was, it was really beautiful to see a father yeah. care so much for his yeah. daughter like that. And yeah. outwardly just keep saying it over and over and over again. He's a proud dad. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good guy. And Raquel and Kayla. Yeah, well, shit, though. Raquel and Kayla are going to get my super fan award for picking the uh, easiest, <laughs> easiest door to paint because that was a huge difference maker. Uh, for this leg, it legit put somebody in last place and put another team in first place. Picking the right door and picking the wrong door, legit put one team ahead of everybody else and put one team behind of everybody else. So uh, to do something like that was extremely a super fanny type move. Don't just pick so one that looks the pretty. The one with calligraphy on it wasn't your super fanny. And really <laughs> intricate shading like, around cursive letters. I That's like not... mermaids. Uh, no, okay, no. Like you... Mermaids are pretty. <laughs> yeah. I would have picked it. I'm like, oh, boobs? Let me give me that one. <laughs> yeah. I also think that like uh, Ryan and Dusty picked one of the hardest ones. There was like so many curves and yeah. swerves. It's like I would have never picked that one. Not it had yeah. nothing to do with the door. Um, but yes, yeah, so they're going to get my super fan move for the episode. All right, let's let's speed through this because make sure our son is home. Yes, yes. I, I'm okay, sorry. Guys, keep we, talking. Yeah, do your thing. I'm sorry. We've kept. No, we're enjoying this. I'm just going to make sure my son is in our building, and then I'm going to go also go tinkle in the potty. There you go. It's a good time. And there's, there's, just, there's, say, there's, just make sure he doesn't tinkle near a mattress in the house. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, we saw that oh, bonus yes, footage. We saw the bonus footage. <laughs> oh my god. He, he was actually annoyed that they put that on there. He's I know. Like, for yeah. They make us take out of our podcast. They put me ping on the internet. Yeah. The audio of it. Like that was, yeah. that was not it. Yeah. That's not one it. of the reasons I do my show live. Like, and one of the reasons I don't do the uh, exit interviews because I'm, I don't, I, this I do for the fans. I don't want to do the same exact exit interview that 643 podcasts do. But anyway, like you, there was no way that we would have you this long. There's no way that we would be able like to have a producer listening on the other end. But anyway, all right, pit start. We're off in LA simultaneous start. All three teams are leaving from the West Western Bonaventure hotel. Teams must find a lock clue box atop the hotel's floor. Uh, four towers. It has four towers. There's four lock boxes. There are just a couple floors, I think below where yeah, you are. Three lock boxes. So four towers and only three of them had lock boxes. We were standing on one tower. We had to go to find oh. on the other three. I thought you were on the helipad on top and there was four towers below. But there were only three lock boxes. Okay, so three lock yeah. boxes. Uh, and uh, the only thing that they really had to go on was find the combination going up and down, up and down. So people were looking up and down on the stairs, uh, which seemed to make sense. So, like, look up and you're going up and down stairs. So, look on the stairs and the staircase. So, you had to, so you're standing there and you had to, they took us up, not the way that we'd have to get out they took us i mean they were smart about it they didn't want to make it easy so we could retrace our steps so they brought us to like a restaurant and we had to go up like a fire escape to get up there yeah so we had to go yep. figure out how to get down into the hallway which is kind of a maze right if you're like just let loose in a hotel um and these are all service exits to get to the 32nd floor to get up to the other tower so you're you see us running and while we're running we're like and we find a clue box, but Dusty and Ryan were already there. So I had an expletive. I said out loud and I turned around and then we just went running. We had to go down 32nd floor, run all the way across, get back up and find another clue box. Yeah. That sounds a little difficult. It does. Uh, yeah. It, it was, you know, it was, it was more difficult because we all had, did you talk about how we all had race blinders? Oh, I, I literally we, read the clue and I should have been, I was like reciting the alphabet. I heard none of it. I heard none. And of you it. heard me say, you heard me say to her, like, slow down. Um, but everyone, no one was slowing down. Everyone was just like frantically panicking. The final leg. I, go, 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 I go, 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 go. <laughs> but there, I mean, there's something to be said about just relaxing for an extra four seconds and getting context <laughs> no. from the English language, no. Good luck. which which nobody no. was doing. It's the final no, leg. hundred percent. I, I agree with Penn and, it's one of the things that I was most proud of me and Christy for in the final leg, we made a commitment to slow down 
And when we first like ripped our glue, right when we um, got to San Francisco, everybody started sprinting towards taxis. And I was like, Christy, let's read the clue again. Let's read through all of the info. If we decide a taxi is the right thing to do, that's fine. But like I, we, I forced us to slow down. It was a commitment. It was team effort. And it is so hard. And we saw people get into cabs before us. Um, but you have to, because the race blinder thing, especially in the final leg, will get you. Not that it worked out for us, but that's the story. Well, you were a little too technical. You got you followed directions to too much to a T at I, the I end. I have to say, I thought of you though, and we can get to the final challenge, Dan, because I heard you talk about your final challenge, and I, I thought of you. We'll get to there. We'll get mm. Crying. Thought of him crying again? No, no. there was because there was something <laughs> that wasn't right on our board. No, she's talking about he's talking oh. about Jen's where Jen's wasn't Jen, right. Yeah. Jen's final thing. So My, anyway, we'll I lost because I didn't say keep the meter running. Four words. Keep the yeah. meter running. I have nightmares to this day about those four words. Raquel and Kayla. Two hundred fifty thousand a word. Yeah, thanks, Dick. All right, so Raquel and Kayla got pretty lucky because as soon as they look off the edge, the elevator happens to be all the way up at the top. So they did. It just looked straight across at it. They didn't really even have to look down. It was just right there. Boom, and they saw it. Figured it yeah, out. Yeah, I'll say this though: like it does, it didn't really matter where the elevator was. There was some dude just pushing a button up and down <laughs> about twenty floors. We didn't know. It, it's it, it's when you ask the question, what goes up and down while looking over that balcony. So right. as soon as they asked that question, for everyone, it became pretty well, obvious, I, right? I was standing next to the clue box, and then I was like, "Oh, it's the elevator." Yeah. I ran over, and our elevator was down. But we could still see it. Yeah, so we, they had to wait till it came up to see yeah. the to see the, that there was a number, in yeah. fact, a number on it. Ryan and Dusty had no clue. They took them. There's no, no way they could fake they, that, right? So that's the extra you should watch. Okay. Um, they it's the, it's the one thing that they had. They um they were trying to enter. I mean, I understand because if, if you don't get it and you're just trying to figure it out, they were just entering um, for trying to find four like relevant digits from the race. Maybe it was something well, else going on. Then they got in the elevator. They went down to the lobby. Uh -huh. And I have to say, like, you, um, not even race brain, like find the answers going up and down. That's why when we're running, we are looking at the stairs. We are looking right. and it makes like there is a world where it makes sense that you would go in yeah. the elevator because it's a glass elevator that you would go down the elevator to look for something. So to me, like, yeah, it made sense. I was impressed, honestly, with how quickly Raquel and Kayla and then both of you figured it out, because I think that that one would have I would have I probably would have overthought it. Yeah. Just, and that's extent. yeah, me too. Go to the blue box and you'll see it there like that almost seems like it would have been too simple in some right. ways. So he, yeah. he was like and he he was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you got like, how did you do? I'm like that. That to me wasn't the hard part of this leg as we will see mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so the root info had them going 1.8 miles which should take seven minutes but la um that could take an hour and seven minutes <laughs> you, yeah. you never know when you're dealing with la but teams must uh, go to i'm not even gonna, el pueblo de los angeles historical monumento where they will find their next clue which is basically one teammate had to dress up like a mexican wrestler and smash pinatas while the other one had to go look for a star a small donkey and a taco which, uh, you know, this one kind of pissed me off a little bit uh, as soon as it started because it's like this, the final leg should never have a needle in a haystack challenge. Uh, I, even though they did give you directions on what you should be looking for, a little donkey is relative because there's some donkeys that look little compared to the other donkeys and some that were hidden behind tacos or whatever they were hiding behind. But needle in a haystack challenges have no there should never ever be one on the final leg of a race like, yeah this was our bad cab this was like i was like well we never had an opportunity for a bad cab so this is our bad cab so again I, i'm not going to take anything away from raquel and kayla on this either because they she stopped she identified them and then you know they got them pretty quickly i will say so i got the little paper i the paper star, by the way, they're all, and I was like yelling at production. I'm like, these yeah. are all paper. Cardboard these is are all paper. paper stars. They're I'm like, this isn't plastic. This is paper. So right. finally, after we hit a bad flat paper one, hit, hit a paper star, get the dull taco thing. And then they're all, and you hear me say they're all bleeping tiny donkeys. So they had donkeys that were all different sizes. So it hit all the small ones. But let me tell you that bleeping tiny donkey we were, ne I, this is the hill I will die on. We were never going to see it unless he hit that entire row next to it out. Because where I had, I couldn't move out of this one place in the gazebo. And 
my view was totally blocked by the other pinatas of that tiny donkey. And so unless that entire one, he just like, he went through and just started smashing at some point, yeah. unless those were gone, I was never going to see it ever from where they were, where it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think looking back on this leg um, there, like, I think that Kim found the elevator. I think she probably could have done the final challenge on her own. I think, we were pretty equal at um, the sound effects thing, but Kim, you were pretty darn good at it too. I think the most important thing that I did on that last day was rage smash like 30. <laughs> 30 yeah. Yeah. I, was, yeah. And, and um, like, babe, I don't know what to tell you. They're all bleeping tiny donkeys. So right? I just started smashing and then it um, exposed it. Yeah. And I was like, because that other row, that entire row was gone. And I'm like, I was screaming. I was like, how am I? Like, there's a lot of swear words. I'm like, how am I supposed to find like, You're when free you to finally curse found here. it? When you finally I found it. She goes, no, she doesn't. I swear a lot. In the race. Like, I I would swear in the race, but obviously it does not make the edits. They selected <laughs> one for you and, like, one for me. Uh, and I'm like, man, this is working out really well. I, I don't get demonetized if it's not in the first 10 minutes. So as long as you guys, you the first 10 minutes is over, which well, it's way over. When, you guys can when she it. found it, she said, Please. oh, well, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Oh, blank my blank is Whoa. what she said. I, I, I got hey. very passionate. I was, like, I was like, are you? And, and it's funny, the, the day we, his birthday was like the day we got back and I went to Target and I found a really tiny donkey pinata. I'm like, they just went to Target? They, got, they found them at Target. Well, they she were got, she got one for me for my I, birthday. I was like, now knock it down. And he was like, too soon, Kim, too soon. So it was about 15 minutes, I think. It seemed like Raquel and Kayla got ahead of you guys. It didn't seem like too yeah. much more than that. Then it was a 6.7-mile drive, which should take 14 minutes. But there was traffic, so I'm guessing it took more than that. And I'm guessing we're at closer to an hour. The first one wasn't too bad. It was about 30 minutes. The The next one oh, was okay. crazy traffic. This one wasn't bad. Yeah. Okay. So what time of day how was long, it? How long after did you say this? Sorry. How long after Raquel and Kayla left, did you guys leave? 15, 15 to 20 minutes. minutes. 15 okay. minutes. Yeah. yeah. So they, they so got a nice little lead. Midday. Yeah. Like we, it was one o'clock, two o'clock. Yeah. Lunchtime. All right, so teams must drive themselves to SIR, which I absolutely love this task, by the way. As somebody in radio uh, for 15 years as a producer, uh, Foley, I lived and died with these sound effects. I had sound effects boards with nothing but Foley sound effects on them. I absolutely love, love this task. Uh, and it had throwbacks to five incredible uh, scenes from The Amazing Race. So as a super fan of this show, that is incredible. As somebody who worked in radio, for me, this is like, this is like, ah! like perfect task and some idiots online were like this task was made just because the holderness is was on shut up uh mm -hmm. but anyway Raquel it took us six, God, it took us six tries yeah. i was like it took raquel and kayla eight tries it took them six tries such an advantage yeah. uh raquel and kayla get there first and they got three or four tries and they watch it a few times before kim and penn even show up i think kim and penn took less time in between and watched it less uh less demonstrations which is the reason they caught up but they got it on the eighth try, while well, Raquel and Kayla got it on the sixth try, um, what was the hard part about this? Uh, it... The um, and it's funny. I didn't see. I don't even know if they got it right, but I, we were told the only reason that we didn't pass the last two tries was because when they were stretching the rubber for the um, watermelon. Yeah, and you're supposed to have two things to whack. You have a whip and a smack. But while you're pulling it back, you have to um, ro you have to wring the the rubber glove so you can hear the like the stretch yeah. kind of noise. And so that was the last thing that we got. Also, uh, Kim had to tell me that I shouldn't probably, I probably shouldn't be talking during yeah. this thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh but that was an easy fix. Like it, it was very me, but because yeah. um, I love to talk. So this, uh, how you guys have like things that are considered like a deficit, but also becomes a superpower like your ADHD. Well, I have misophonia, so I'm very sensitive to sounds and I hear things. Like uh, this is something that I learned through therapy. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I got into a lot of fights as a child. Um, I have misophonia, so certain sounds will cause a physical reaction in my body and I can't control, I have to leave a room, I have to, like, I, I legit carry earplugs around my neck that are 
change things by 20 decibels and I have to wear them on, whenever I go out to yeah. eat and things like that. But this is something that I can hear a sound and I hear everything. So I would have heard the little and I'd be uh -oh. like, okay, I know so this. You have to get that little sound because that sound like triggers something in my brain. So that's like a superpower. But if, if this challenge had somebody eating in it, I couldn't do it at all. So I, I can't listen to somebody eat over and over again. I'd have to let Diana do it by herself. Kim has uh, whatever low grade misophonia is. Not even low grade. Maybe he mid grade. And I, if you I have to go, quiet. I eat outside. Yeah, if it's too quiet. No, I just eat outside. No, I do. Like for lunch, like you're like if you guys are all together, I go and eat outside because you don't like because I like soup. Kind of oh, slurps God, yeah. no slurping <laughs> soup. Well, I've left movie theaters just because the popcorn got to me sometimes. Like uh, if the yeah. movie theater is not loud or it's too silent, sometimes I have to leave the theater. Uh, so yeah, I never even knew this was a thing. Joey, did, did you have any idea this was a thing? They're like both talking about this, like this is a known. It's when she thing. said, when whenever Penn said something about marsupials, I was like, I don't know who. <laughs> She's don't, such an idiot. It, it affects less than three percent of the world, so it's not like a huge type Whoa. of thing. So it's it's very oh, yeah. rare, but it's sometimes it's brought on by childhood trauma, and I was a lot of things happened to me as a child for biting my nails or chewing my mouth open. Uh, so it's, it's like, it's almost a form of PTSD for me, uh, which I was mm -hmm. diagnosed with recently. Thanks. Uh, thanks mom. Um, so, uh, they, they, they had to, uh, <laughs> uh, Brendan and Rachel's running of the balls. They had to do Lena's haystack. They had to do, of course, the, uh, Claire's watermelon challenge, uh, oh. Amanda hey. and Chris's uh, pies to the face and then Colin, uh, there's a book written with this title, you know, uh, my ox is broken. So some of the most iconic uh, scenes in the history of the race. I think they should have gotten rid of the pie in the face and and incorporated the cheese task falling down the hill. So yeah. I think that would have been, oh, yeah. been way more iconic than the pies to the face. But okay, yeah. th they got four of them right. Yeah, uh, it's a great challenge. It was. I think I love this challenge. And do you really? Yeah, it was the first. I was the first amazing because I think most amazing race challenges. I was just trying to get through them. Like, I mean, like the painting and the whatever, like normally I could sit and enjoy painting, but this is the first one. And I really did believe we were so far out of it. I mean, 15 minutes I felt and, and with traffic, I'm like, oh, second place. Okay. I'm, it's going to haunt me forever that I couldn't find a leaping mm -hmm. pinata, but second place, let's enjoy. I actually, this is the first amazing race challenge. I really enjoyed. Like I had a lot of fun in this. Yeah, and you were isolated in your own rooms too, so you don't see people. You don't get. You just. You just have to get in there and do the task. You're not distracted by anything else, which I think is a good thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you really follow TikTokers from Foley? Like new Foley TikTokers? <laughs> I didn't even know that was I've a never thing. Never done Foley. I mean, most of what we shoot is on an iPhone, so it's not like we produce. Yeah, you like, just use the I sound. Know, people make I do a lot of lip syncing, lies. which is kind of like. Well, hold on, lies, because I saw you guys do Foley sound effects on one of your first podcasts. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, that's yeah. a, that is a Foley true. sound effect. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I guess that's Foley. Yeah, I guess that's Foley. Um, that is Foley. I do. Yeah. I think it's fascinating. I, it's um, awesome. It, it's, yeah. it's such a cool thing that they used to do back in old school radio when before they had real sound effects. They would make the noises and, you know, crunch celery as breaking bones. Like, <laughs> Like it's just like the coolest things. All right, so uh, Kim and Penn leave just as Raquel and Kayla are outside getting directions in the parking lot, and there was a couple things here that I noticed. Okay, so the, at first I was like, "Oh, that is such an ace move to grab the guy that they got, so he doesn't have to sign the waiver." But it's like they left and he didn't sign the waiver, and then he's wearing the shirt, so he probably didn't have to sign a waiver because he already signed a waiver because he worked there. So that was like one of the things. I don't know. But go ahead. All right, so hang on. The, you're close. There was something that happened there. Like we should have, we should have left at the same time. Um, we like we walked up to look at the guy's phone, and it died as soon as we walked up to it. So <laughs> it went, it went he black. Just started just he's like he's like let me just tell you, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to trust the Amazing Race to like some guy just telling me directions. So we actually had to run across the street and get directions. So it took us an extra five minutes there. Oh, well, hmm. okay. So a little five minute difference, but that. So nobody, he didn't have to sign a, he didn't have to sign a release because he was probably an employee, which is what I'm guessing, because they all have to uh, sign releases. Maybe. I don't know. You don't remember. That's fine. Oh, yeah. The word was, I live downstairs from there. <laughs> yeah. So then it's a 21-mile ride here that they have to take to the home of the LA Galaxy, which with no traffic should take about 30 minutes, but LA is LA. And over, over an hour. Over yeah, an hour. Over an hour to get to the final yes. task, which has got to be... Going three miles, three miles an hour. Power of life. In the finale, like that is yep. our cab ride, the last cab ride to that 
boat was really long, but it was not an hour. And I can't imagine how long that And navigating was. it too. So keep right. in mind, you're, you're navigating it. And if I give him the wrong directions because, oh, um, the the guy that we got directions from said, I'm, I'm making up exit numbers right now. He's like, take ex exit 104, go this way. But on the additional info, it said, take exit 103 and take the Southeast entrance. So it's like, okay, so the, the stadium probably covers the block here. We just need to go by what the the additional info says yeah but we didn't probably really have probably didn't direction. want you running into the mat first right so we didn't yeah. have the right directions to say like per se so we were kind of guessing it was terrifying and awful Ooh. and i was like please dear god i was like let there be a like a big puzzle at the end like you had jen mm -hmm. like let there be some big equalizing we were for that too. <laughs> i was like i we was hoping. hoping for some big puzzle at the end that uh. would you know help us out yeah no, good luck we made up 45 yeah. minutes on the, the silliest puzzles but i wish the final puzzle was actually a puzzle besides putting a chair together putting a chair together assembling ikea furniture okay that's a, that's a great memory task let's put them in order of things we saw it's the taj mahal i wonder where we saw that one all right uh but so uh so this here uh somebody brought it up in chat which makes uh rock if raquel and kayla if you got out first and raquel and kayla were coming Second, they would have just followed you. Did you ever just think of following them? Yes. Uh, no, I never no thought way. of it. I don't trust anybody else's direction. I know you guys it. were great at, uh, at navigation, so I don't know if that yeah. would have been your mindset, but I 100% believe if we, you got directions like, we didn't first. We did it, but I thought of it. You thought of it. We never yeah. talked about it. I only trust my directions. I don't want to leave the amazing race up to following somebody or them getting ahead of us, like going through a light and no. us being stuck there. You have to have the information. Even if you are kind of well, following, yeah. you have to have the information yourself. The, the information was on the clue. Well, that's, but the, it said like, get on the 101. Right. I, I don't, again, the street, but I, we don't know how to get to the 101. I got right? you. Right. So, or I'm making up street names now, by the way, um, but we didn't know how to get to the highway from there. Yeah. I think it was the one I want. Mm -hmm. So what is going down? It's the final memory challenge, and I almost shit a pickle and was throwing things at the TV, and you could see my, from my tweet I had to retract. that uh, Teams, there was 13 things that you just had to put on, and it was like these, I'm like, these are the simplest clues. How easy is it to just find something that matches that clue? So I was like, this is literally the easiest memory challenge in the history of the race. Right. And I was going, I was like... Because they had like eight of them done as before you even got there, and I'm like, oh, this is so so dramatic. Thanks, and I was so pissed well, off. So yeah, that that was that, I I think that's probably how a lot of people felt when they first saw it. But each answer to a clue had five, four or five very intricately different like very subtly different things about them like napoleon's hat was like slightly off on a couple of them and then it was like the guy that we saw at the roadblock there were like four dudes who looked like that guy so it was it was harder than it looked and the only reason that we made it look easy was because my wife is an anally retentive um type a personality who takes notes everywhere she goes and super fun. but it should I, yeah it was I like amazing for harder, this but so we, we, we were five minutes behind them in directions. And then, okay, my pinata, my B, I got us 15 minutes behind. I said, Ken, Penn, park straight. He's like, no, we have to go around. So we, we spent five minutes circling the yep. stadium. to that was me. So we, lost five, we lost five minutes we lost there, five minutes which at that parking. point was awful. Yeah. So we each had our, like, I, the last two legs were not our best amazing race work at all <laughs> and so we were running in i was like let's just hope it's really tough and as soon as we walked in we heard fault so they were already guessing by the time we oh wow so they had them all well, on the that, board damn they, they were they had them all up and i we were one off on the first guess and i was 1000 percent sure on everything except for the coin because as soon as i saw the coin when i and that was a low moment in my life <laughs> i actually took it over and i showed it to dusty in a room to like this is what it looks like so i never looked at it i was like get me the hell out of here but because and this is Jen, I like literally thought of you in this moment. Cause I, I remember you talking about your final puzzle about how the wing wasn't going in right or something. Right. Mm. So she's going to relive this. Um, one. Object, I'm sorry. Object. If you don't want to talk about it. No, you don't go have for it. <laughs> so um, so the, the, the puzzle had duplicate parts for every slot. I think there were like seven total that we had to put on the plane, but there was like 14 pieces and then each part had at least two, like two images on it. Um, and 
Some of them were like flat panels. And so they could be like completely interchangeable. Um, and then the big wings on the side actually had dimension to them. So there was like a thick edge and a thin edge. So the first thing I did when I saw that, because there was two of each of them. So there was like two left wings and two right wings. I went to look at a plane to see which edge is supposed to be pointing forward. And the thick edge, it's called the leading edge, is supposed to be pointing forward. And then the thin edge is right. backward. So I thought I was eliminating variables. Um, it turns out you had to use both the left wings in order to get the combination of images correct. Now, that was true for everyone. So like everyone had that weirdness, but I was the only person that noticed the dimension. And so I was like, well, the, like I literally at one point was like, this is not possible. You cannot, you can't solve this puzzle. No. <laughs> and then toward the end, after both of them got it, I was like, unless the orientation of the wings doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. And I just like tried it. And then it was like, you got it. And then, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, similarly, as soon as we got the fault, cause it was just the coin that we didn't get right. The first guess. Cause I was really confident on everything else. The Jeeps you, that you took, they like, they take you the rest of the way. It was in Corsica, that leg where we went up to do the donkey. You had to jump in these Jeeps and our Jeep was blue and they didn't have a blue Jeep for us, except for like a blue, like Jeep that you would see riding around your town. So it's like, Oh, maybe they wanted the color. And so I started switching out, but they just were the model. And so everybody had the same choices on that one. And they were just going for the model. Right. We had a blue was, Jeep and there were also yellow Jeeps and they had a blue and a yellow Jeep, but the yellow Jeep wasn't the one we took, we took. Mm -hmm. but it did look like the old town car. So there, so here's, here's the thing. There were, there were four <laughs> coins we couldn't tell apart from. There were two Jeeps. There were also, also there were three Jeeps, yeah. No, but there were two Jeeps that we were deciding oh, okay. between. We also weren't a hundred. You heard on there, we weren't a hundred percent sure about the boat because the spelling of the boat. And because well, I Kim, was, but that then I was you, sure the color, but I didn't know right. So there the were names. two. So I'm like, maybe they're going for right. the name. So there are two of that color. So this this is when it turns into a math problem, right? We're a hundred percent sure about everything else, and the reason, by the way that we were a hundred percent sure about everything else is because Kim took such great notes and we studied every night. We took this she has these like hermetically sealed visual notes that she wrote and we spread them all over our hotel room floor for like three nights. And it was the reason why we were at hundred percent everywhere else. And then it would just became like the Beekman uh, boys. It was a math problem. So we, we yeah. settled on, we were like, they're not going to put a Ford Wrangler on this thing. So we settled on the other Jeep. Um, we, you you became more confident in the other boat and then just very the quickly went through four coins and it was over in six, six minutes. minutes wow so yeah. i i was gonna ask how long it took you but i throughout this whole season and they get on me constantly about me giving you constantly giving you the super fan award but i understood what you were doing and how it was going to come into play and they, if there is a final memory challenge, I said, there's no way that they're going to lose a final memory challenge. If there's a final memory challenge, they're going to win the race. And I said that since preseason almost. Like, I, I called you guys the winner. I had you guys in first. I had Raquel and Kayla in. Uh, we almost let you down, dude. Sorry. Raquel and <laughs> Kayla in, close. in third and Sam and Connie in second. And, I mean, Raquel, Raquel and Kayla in fourth, uh, Ryan and Dusty in second, and Sam and Connie in third. But Sam and Connie got taken out. So I, I legit predicted the top three before the race. But during the race, there was no doubt in my mind that if you made it to the finale, that you guys were going to win. And that's kind of how I always felt in my season. Like, there was nobody who knew the race like I did. There was nobody who was taking the notes like I did. I just had to make it to a finale and have a, a memory challenge. And, and that's exactly how I saw this. And obviously, like, I don't even have to wait to get to the awards. You 100% get the Super Fan Award because you did what you needed to do to be successful at a finale of an amazing race. My, my hermetically sealed flat. I made them flashcards. But before you did that though, you had a spreadsheet. Like I had a spreadsheet. You watched the show and you made notes. You made a spreadsheet yeah. to say that why people got eliminated, why people won. I have separate spreadsheets. Why did they win? Why did they get eliminated? Like the odds of taking a fast forward and it being canceled. There was only one in the history of the seasons for 26 seasons. So yeah, that's why I went for the fast forward and it got, happened to get canceled, but that was only happened once. So the odds were in my favor, but like if, everything is just like coming down to the math problems or numbers and the reason that you studied and the re and even if you don't do this uh, or do this normally in your regular life, this is what every super fan, anybody who's watching the show, whoever has a 
any inkling of going on the show, this is how you win the show. Five minutes here, making up two minutes there, making up three minutes here. That makes a difference when you make a 15 minute error and you're still able to get there and pass them because of these little minutes. Each minute makes a big difference. And this is and the I reason do. you win. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for your support and the super fans awards throughout the season. And I, I do think that Raquel and Kayla were something very real happened and it happens in other seasons, but definitely happened in ours. Like Dusty and Ryan were like unstoppable. We had a run there too. Raquel and Kayla were hitting their stride. If there had been one more task, it would have gone to, I mean, we were, I think Penn and I, not, not Penn, me, I was definitely kind of falling apart there. These last two legs were not our best legs at all. And we were definitely between normally in the beginning of the season, we would get to tasks and blow through people. We would get in and get out so quickly. I I I actually wanted, yeah. I wanted to ask about that. Has anyone ever run like a perfect last leg? It, it, it's it's really hard to run a perfect mm. last, isn't it? I guess Will and James kind of crushed it. But that was a, well, let's that not was talk a... about that. Um, but I, 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 Will and James, I rooted for them. I knew them before the show. I wanted them to get on the show so bad. I, I was not a fan of how, of their the way their season played out, and definitely a needle. But that wasn't hit. their fault. That was the yield. Eh. And the needle, eh. the yield eh. was terrible. And the needle in the haystack challenge in the end. I hate that in the finale. Like. It's hard. It's in the like you, 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 to get there, I get it. There's some sort of luck to get to the finale, but to win the raising race, it shouldn't be based on luck. And just because yeah. one person threw the, the damn baby on the floor and didn't and notice that it, so like wrong. that he got, they got, they got like two hours behind because of something like that. It breaks my heart to have all that effort. But anyway, I love Will and James. They're my friends. I text them, I call them, and I was a little salty about that, that season. That's, that's my, that's a, that's my, that's a me thing. That's not their thing. Um, mm-hmm. But for this season, like, you guys did what you needed to do to win. And Raquel and Kayla, they were absolutely great, incredible racers. Uh, they, really they, they just didn't pay as close attention to detail as you did. And it's, that- also, it's so easy, though, to get to start overthinking and then question every single one because of the ambiguity. Like, the, 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 the pictures, like the paintings, ours were paintings. And there's, like, room for interpretation. And then if you have Napoleon with a big hat and then a little hat. And if you're not able to say a hundred percent, like we know these eight and we're just going to do the math problem with these two. This is my Napoleon hat. Oh my God. <laughs> is that a real drawing? <laughs> yeah. You need like, honestly, you should go through all these. They're amazing. We, we did drawings as well. And, this, and I would write the back of it. The, so these are my flashcards. And the flag, you have the flag. Yeah. You have to do the flag, the language, the money. Flags. Pink building we we stopped in front of. I love nice. this. This was a weird dude in Corsica, but like, look at like what, like what, hat. yeah, what his hat looks like, and then you know, where yeah. this setting because oh, like the the, the his oh coat, God. what his coat yeah, looks like. That like was a the other denim, thing. Co- like yeah. a denim. Uh, I love this denim shirt. The I nerd in me. Want to just make it known? I mean, this might be obvious, but like. Kim and Penn weren't able to like reference these notes in the final challenge. No, but that's right. That's they right. Had them and they studied in between. Yes. Then it was more fresh on their mind. So they were prepared, but it's not like you can go through it. I even asked in, in my final challenge, if I could like, I just wanted to draw stuff. I wanted to like draw the parts so that I could look at them all in one place. And they, like, they don't let you do that kind of, it's like, you can only use the tools that are kind of, there in front of you so just to give you guys credit for what it took i do expect one one of those pictures behind you to be taken out and those drawings to be laid out behind you like like the worst but i did bring multicolor pens (laughs) the reason you won go get proud you should be proud of it like a kid like a painting on the refrigerator very kid draw i mean they were really bad carolina basketeer thank you so much appreciate that super chat 20 bucks thank you guys so much it really means a lot thank you uh i'm glad you guys are enjoying this and i and I'm glad you guys are sticking around so long. It really means a lot. Thank you very much. Um, uh, there, there has been a couple uh, perfect final legs, um, uh, but nothing that ultimately stands out in, to, in my head. Uh, Matt and Dana did run a really good leg recently. Um, uh, I, don't, I, I would say, like, our, I, I kind of, it's still, so I would say, like, we, we, the moment they say, you know, we didn't get that final, like, go, 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 clue, which is fine. But they said, run through the tunnel. And I was like, this is it. We're winning right now. And it was, was like, elation. it's something you, like, you think about. And, you, we, you know, we watch everything. And 
and sort of like be living it was surreal, but I was instantly very, very sad for Raquel and Kayla because I always root for the female teams, not enough females win this race. I think we could have like a separate conversation about like what it would take. I think they should. Anyway, there's a lot. It, it's there's a reason for, for it. I can explain. But go ahead. Well, well, I would love to hear your theory because I think as a, as, as a fan on the couch, I would be rooting for Raquel and Kayla. Yeah. So we hit the mat and I like, we were hugging and I was like, oh, and then and we also had just grown so close with them. You oh. know, we had stayed in touch through the pandemic. And so it was really hard and they are, they are so fierce and they had that like go, go, go energy that I think a lot of teams don't like they never stopped. You see Kayla was like running with Raquel's backpack at some point. They had their backpack so- on during the whole final challenge, by the way. Like, yeah. what I you know. <laughs> like, take the back. And like, also my dad called me. He's like, they kept on putting them back in the baskets instead like, of like, why? we just laid them all out yeah. on the ground. There was like a few little things I think slowed them down. But again, that's like race brain. Mm-hmm. And they were ahead. I think they were freaking out that they were ahead. Um, but it was really hard. And then we, you know, we got to watch it with them the other night. And it was like, as happy as we were, it was like hard to sit with them seeing how close it really was. Um, yeah. So mm. like, it's hard, it's hard, but you know, like you guys, I know averages don't mean anything, but it is also rare to see a team who had the best average in a season end up winning and Tell me about you guys it. did. <laughs> so props yeah. to you for that. And Raquel and Kayla really did hit their stride and were racing really well. And you know, the last now four seasons, I think, uh, have been won by a couple. Am I wrong in that? 32, Will and James. Will and James mm-hmm. are a couple, but they're a male, male team. But yeah. Oh, right. okay, I'm they're sorry. a couple. So oh, a couple. couple. Yeah, sorry. she's, I think her, yeah, her, <laughs> yeah, no, her, thinking female she's female. saying people who live together and are yeah. in a relationship. Yeah. I think there's an advantage. Yeah. With that. I think there's an advantage to that. And then, too. you know, the teams that got put together were a male, female team too that won. But all right, let's right. finish this off and we'll get into the deeper stuff. Raquel and Kayla got two wrong on their first try, coins and candy. Kim and Penn got one wrong on their first try. Uh, there was four different coins to choose from, uh, but they started second-guessing themselves. Both teams uh, started getting things wrong after that. Uh, Kim and Penn were done in seven minutes, seven countries, 17 cities, 22,000 miles, and she ran through, and that's when I <laughs> fuck, I can't do it. I've never been able to watch a, a finale without crying. I didn't even thinking about it. it makes me fucking tear. Oh, do a podcast. When you said, uh, "Are we gonna win the Amazing Race?" Like, that's like when I ran, I knew we lost, and that's exactly what I said. I'm sorry, we lost the Amazing Race, and I, it echoes. But um, fuck. Uh, Ryan talks up Dusty. Penn shouts out the crew. Uh, Taylor and Isaiah are at the finish line, which is pretty cool. But there was yeah. one one thing that ah oh, fuck that I noticed. Um, sorry, Kim, you looked kind of sad when Penn was sitting there talking you up. I don't know. You, your face looked like there was something wrong. Like there was something wrong when Penn was talking. Might, that might have, that might have been emotion, just uh, overwhelming emotion. I, probably. I think, I think I really struggled with for Cal and Kayla not winning. Oh, maybe that was it. And yeah. so, oh, Justin, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's a me thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I think that I struggled with, um, I struggled with, I, we got up there and I looked down and we, our season especially got to be so close because the way we had to travel and the, we started a pandemic together and we had a couple days in Glasgow together. We all became, we bonded really quickly. We got to be good friends. So immediately I looked down and I see Lulu and Lala, who I love so much. And I see, I see all these people I love. I'm like, because we won, they didn't win. And I'm very uncomfortable in that position. So I instantly got sad and I did not. And I'm, I'm one of the, like, I don't want a big birthday party. I, the, I always say like, I love being married, but my wedding was not the best day of my life. I don't like being, I don't like people like looking at me. <laughs> and so says the YouTuber. Uh, no, I, understand. I know. I mean, but like, that's what I, like, I don't like talking I, to people and I talk for a living, but go ahead. I know. So it's a very weird thing. So I, I instantly became very sad that other people didn't win. And like, it is honestly, it's like part of why living with me is so hard. Cause Penn is like, yeah, like let's go <laughs> sticking through the quad. And I'm like, Oh, but honey, like, you know, so it was, I think like it was, one of the best moments of my life and it's a moment i will never forget and i'm so glad we did this but it was also very hard to see to see other people not win 
so uh, Raquel and Kayla were 30 minutes behind for those asking, and 15 minutes behind them was Ryan and Dusty, uh, roughly, from what I heard. Dang, so they got they got hung up in there for a while. I, I okay. think they even even. Okay. I think they may have taken a minute to gather themselves. That's what we did. Yeah. When we, I don't think I don't think they sat there the whole time and were changing things out. I could be wrong, but I, I think they took a minute to kind of like compose themselves. Could they hear uh, yeah. the finish line? They could hear sure. the. Yeah. It was really close. Yeah. Because it was we were on a ship, so it was literally. Across. And I saw that the is- I saw the boom camera go up when when they finished yeah. their chair, and then that's oh. when that's when I started to cry, and I broke down, and I'm like, I'm fucking done, I'm done, yeah. I, I'm done, and that's I just brutal. sat there. We lost by 15 minutes. We we lost. We were an hour behind when I left my cab, and we lost by 15 minutes. That's crazy. Some, someone in the chat was asking if they make you finish the task. Yes, and the unless you're yes, third. Um, Unless you're I tried to not finish because I legitimately was like they let, they no. made you finish and you came in third. They didn't like the paparazzi like, I'm never finished. Third. I'm done. I'm done. This is not possible. I am done. And Darren, who we were talking about earlier, brought me a bottle of water. Oh, <laughs> hmm. he's just, just, you know, just you can just stick with it a little longer. And so I did. But anyway, yeah. that was brutal. I it is hard, and I I can appreciate Kim that. You know, it's you're you're empathetic enough to understand what it probably feels like for um, the other teams, and it's it's true. And I, I think especially for the second and third teams to be in that final leg and be so close, like it it's heavy emotions, and we've talked about it plenty on, on this. Well, I, I actually told Raquel and Kayla to reach out to you, Jen, because I was like. I feel like yeah. this is the person that could understand this because you are so close, like you you literally and. That is, and I also know, like, let's be honest, um, there's so much, as much as prepared we were, there's so much luck involved and yeah. we got lucky that day. Like we, we got, we were very prepared. I mean, I think we were probably the most prepared, but we got really damn lucky. Luck, so I'm not going to say play a part, but it shouldn't play a part in the finale. Okay. Well, we, but we were, we got, I mean, we had the pinata thing, but yeah. yeah that, was, that was unlucky. All right. So let's go through some of the. Some of the things that the first season with no fast forward, no yield, no U-turn. Uh, first season to only visit two countries. Kim and Penn are the oldest winning team to ever win. Um, uh, they are ranked fifth all time uh, for the um, highest average of, of, of ever on the history of the race. Eric and Jeremy at 1.69. Uh, Dave and Rachel, 1.83. 1.69 Crazy good. Megan and Cheyenne, 2.00. Justin and Diana, 2.08. Kim and Penn. Uh, Kim and Penn, 2.09. So 0. 0.01 away. Oh, if, you're going to hold that over our head now. I can, what can I hold? You can hold the million dollar check that's like this. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Kelsey and Joey do. They're like, hey, we never got a first, but we got this one, bitch. Um, so yeah, it, you're 0.01 behind us. And that's only because you ran one less leg than we did. So the averages came out weird. Um, yeah. I am. Uh, but yeah, Eric and Jeremy uh, didn't win their season, and they got a one point six nine. It, it just that's crazy. Wow. My mind. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like this strong, like these really strong, strong teams who don't like you can't. I think it's like we won the last leg. We I don't. I don't know. I I I think Ryan and Dusty. It's finished 15 minutes behind Raquel and Kayla. And they got so hung up. Yeah, that's how good they are at tasks. That's how good they are. I mean, besides the cheese thing, they really didn't struggle places. And so it it yeah. really is. I mean, these teams were so good. So I think like if there was a different task, there was something different. Like I just feel like, and if there was one more leg, which there was supposed to be, but then Taylor and Isaiah had to like had to leave at like the last minute. Shane, sorry. So. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, the set, Raquel and Kayla are the second best female female team to ever run the race at 2.73. That's awesome. Only behind <laughs> Christy and Jen, who are 2.5. Equally awesome. Equally awesome. <laughs> yeah. Ryan and Dusty. I'm proud have... of them though. That's, it's pretty great. And they, they really, it, it seems like when they came back, they came back a stronger team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure, Ryan sure. and Dusty. And they were strong to begin with, yeah. Two, yeah. two point three six. Arun and Natalia have a record for checking in last the most times. Three, like three, five, seven, and ten. 
Uh, so they 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 set a record. They're in the record books. It doesn't matter. You're still and you in know the what? A, a rune a we'll rune will that. will put yeah a rune will frame that and put it on his wall. Hey, yeah, you know, just like Mike he and Mo, has so much joy, and he like like he definitely enjoys life as much as it looks like he enjoys life. Uh, yeah, Mike and Mo, they set a record for the only team to be eliminated first twice. So like, yeah. it's you know, there's a lot of records being set this season, good and bad. But uh, <laughs> we can have fun with those. Um, but yeah, you guys crushed it. I mean, there's been f- almost 400 teams to run this race, and statistically, you guys are fifth best average, uh, oldest to win the race, and you you know you deserved it from the beginning to the end. You guys definitely deserved it. And ve- yeah, you guys were so fun to watch. Thank you so much for your season. You guys are really awesome. Extremely yeah. proud that you guys are a member of the Amazing Race family, and not only the family, but winners to help represent right, well, let's get off the winners thing. all right so you. david nelson five dollars thank you so much i appreciate that in the super chat i appreciate you uh, uh but before i forget justin go for it. Yes. there was a question for jen way back from go for um, it yeah yeah from somebody wanted to jen to elaborate on your her opposition to your comment last week on your assumptions of her and christy which i thought she did last week but my about what so can you, you said justin and i had some sort of assumption about you last week and you're like no false false i can't remember what the hell it no was. the assumption was that and it's this is the reason why female female teams don't win as often because female female teams are usually too similar oh the, the reason male female teams were, oh that's yeah. right that's right they're so similar yeah. that's right and I mean, that that is that is false. christy and i are not we are not similar at all like the way are very different yeah yeah justin what is it just because they got boobs or something they're just, no because they, they, got, they both they do the same exact real. thing for a living they both competitors no, at the no, same exact stop. level they both like <laughs> train the same ways they both time time out, time time out. Yes. Justin. go <laughs> go ahead jen okay firstly when christy and i competed we had we were retired from skiing they they were casting us as it was that whole dynamic duo thing so we were all everybody had like they paired you because you had similar backgrounds, but like Christy and I were raised very differently. Um, but, but also we were, we were very dynamic as females. Like we, we both had parents that pushed us academically, but we, we were also athletes. So there was a lot of similarities, I understand the similarities between us. <laughs> like we're, we're so like dynamic where it, does that make sense? I'm not. No, I, I'm not trying to. Very, I'm not trying to discredit different. like the skills that you brought, but the fact is, you're females, females. You're roughly the same age. You competed at the same type of things. You grew up in the same type, doing the same types of things to be great at what you are. So that's because you're so similar. That's why Lulu and Lala can never win the race. They can run the race a million times. They will never win because they're literally DNA. They're the same exact person. They just have all the same skills. Having like similar backgrounds and then being the same. Kim Kim is going to hand Justin his ass right now. Go for it. Go for it. Statistics for the right. So, okay, you're saying female teams don't win because they're too similar. Yes. Well, then why do just as many, I think with Will and James, just as many male male teams as one as female male teams? So why do the men win that? I don't think that that's 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 not accurate. Firstly, I think it's more male female combos than it is either male male. It's like fifty or fifty five to sixty percent are male female teams. But then, so I will say that there are there as a female female team that raced, um, and Christy and I are we're very strong, we're very athletic. So like we did keep up and we held our own. I remember outrunning people in Morocco and having like firefighters be like how is she sprinting up this cobblestone past me um so like we held our own but there were some physical tasks for christy in hong kong when she had to bash that stuff with a bat where her she actually um had visible bruising in her hands because of the reverberation through the the bat and there's stuff like that where i do feel like some of the 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 way the physicality of the race i think it can be more advantageous to have two males yeah. than two females to get you a little bit, if we're going based on. Well, that, I, I mean, but the men are the same. So Justin's yeah. argument that like female teams are the same, but wouldn't the male teams, I, yes. I look at them. I, that's why it's male, female teams have better odds of winning than anybody else to ever go on the show. The second best would be oh, male, 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 male teams because of the physicality of a lot of the tasks. And that's, that's it. That's that's Yeah. Just, 
just kind of dancing uh, around what we've been talking about, yeah. just some observations from this season when we're talking about gender and when we're talking about difference in personality. Um, I thought Raquel and Kayla were so strong uh, because th th they actually were very different. Um, if you get to know them, they were they they looked the same. They're both flight attendants. They're both brunettes, but they they personalities were kind of yin and yang for sure. Yeah. Um, I remember like I do. I remember some some bits and pieces of the show when I was like, this is a bit. Like when, when there's something that's gender biased, sometimes you're like, oh, well, that's just a, that's the, you know, what you got dealt in life. But like the clue that was eight feet off the ground that literally all the guys could just walk up and clip and like just grab it. I remember thinking of that when I'm like, you know, and the ladder for the record, it, we never saw a ladder. No, I feel like there was one ladder. Well, we didn't on need one. Side. Yeah, no, but we're telling Kayla right. they're like on the shoulders. Right. I, I would say that for the most part, like it, I like the fact that it, it brings people of all different genders yeah. together. And I also think for the most part, the race does a good job of keeping it even. Yeah. Um, I, I, I struggle to think of like the, the one that's like so on the nose as having to jump eight feet that would be advantageous to all women. Like a little something that even when we were in Corsica and you were doing that, like the canyoneering, the women had to go change in a tent and all the dudes. That's got, another one. Got yeah. Got we just got right naked right, right in the middle. And, and like, yeah. And on that, and and so so they had to go. Women up a chose hill. chose to get naked in a tent. They were told to go naked in. So no. here's because no. I'm like on my season, they told Krista, uh, uh, Krista and Tiffany to do that, and Krista was like, "F that!" And she just did it right in front of everybody. So that, she's like, so "We're in Brazil." So <laughs> may, I think women are we're like rule followers. So when you get there and you're like, they're like, "Okay, go change in the tent." They all went and changed in the tent. They didn't see that Penn and Ryan and Akbar all just went yeah. and just changed right there and yeah. then also let's talk about like you start your period yeah and that's yeah. like like i like i did and i was like five minutes digging in my bag so like there's and we're running around greece i'm like i yeah. have to find a bathroom because this is a crime scene like yeah, so I like, I it's a funny story about that yeah, yeah, I bet. yeah. so there's lots of disadvantages there are disadvantages I, i'm not saying it's fair i'm just gonna have your period at some point if you are a female and this is fascinating. We all cycle that. Try it's this. fascinating. The try women this. all do it at the same time. It's yeah. nature. That's Isn't right. nature wonderful? No. Like they all like cycled together. Okay, so I'm, I'm in, I'm in Venice. <laughs> I'm in Venice with a stranger. Oh, God. And she's screaming at me that she just had her period. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck do you want me to do on it? Like, she's like, go get my bag, go get this. She's in the Plug like, it up and go. I'm like, I'm not touching any of that. I don't know what it is. Like, I was, oh, I, was I was looking at the camera guy. He's like, don't talk to me, dude. I don't want to know nothing about it. I'm like, we need a chick here for something. I right. I was so horrified. She was like, just do it. Get it. I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Michelle oh. Rivera, I'm sorry, one sec. I just have to shout out the people donating money because it's crazy. I never ask, but thank you guys. Michelle Rivera, 20 bucks. Scott Griffin, 999. Thank you for a great season, Justin, Joey, Jen, uh, Aaron, oh. Valencia. Really enjoyed this season and podcast. Huge fans of the green team. We're happy for Kim and Penn. Uh, Scott Griffin, thanks for a great season, Justin, Joey, and Jen. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. I've had that, people guys. Venmo and me personally in crypto, just so you know. Oh, Justin, good. Sorry. Well, I'm glad oh. you're making something. Get that Bitcoin. Get that Bitcoin. Back to the gender thing. Justin, yeah. I have to respectfully disagree. Yeah, I sure. think that the reason that female female teams have not been as successful on the race is because all females are somehow inherently the same. No, they're not all inherently the same. They male female teams are inherently different. Like males they experience the world different than females. So they're going to have different skills and different things that they bring to the table. It's like when you watch Survivor, you can kind of guess, okay, when there's endurance challenges, women are going to win that because women have a higher pain tolerance. If there's like, you know, a balancing challenges, women have a better balance than men. These are just things that are facts in life. Those are things that are, start off, you know, you, okay, they have an advantage. Kim uh, Penn is six foot six. Yeah, he's going to be able to jump and get an eight foot thing that, that Lulu and Lala. Give okay, action. Lulu and Lala have to get up there. Uh, those are just things that That's we deal right. with. I, I'm just talking about statistically wise. I, of course, I, who the fuck am I? I'm just an idiot who thinks he knows everything. But this is just what the observances and the spreadsheets and the things that I look at. Like, okay, you guys have <clears throat> sent similar skills. You guys grow well, up doing the similar things. So you're going to have similar yeah. traits. More similar than male-female teams. I, I think you make good observations about some of those things that women are better at. There are a lot of things in the world that women are better at. 
um, and they can be quantified in challenges. I think like, I'm glad that we have this platform to talk about it, to make sure that when the race puts something together, they try to make it equal when yeah. that happens. Um, I like, but you know, Ju Justin, people are just wonderful miracles that are made of all different sorts of shapes and sizes. Absolutely. That's what my mom told me when I was a little baby. And I'm just telling you that right now. They are. Listen, women tend to be better at attention to detail tasks. Like there's a lot of things that women excel at. And I'm not saying that women are any less good at a ta task than men, but having a male female team is more, is going to be more diverse than a male male team or a female female team. That's all I'm saying. We and diversity can help win the race. Statistically, 50% of the people who were on the race have been mixed gender, right? Male, female. Is that accurate? Uh, I'm asking. Yeah. What I, I want to know. I would like, I want because to Because when you go, when you do a statistic, if that's true, then that means 25% and 25% or 30, 20 were male, male, and female, female, all this stuff. So you have right. to take the how, exactly how many male, male, and female, female right. teams are on as compared to how they won. That all statistically matters. Not right. just how many won, it's how many actually competed right. as to how many won. And fewer female teams, right. I think, compete. Yes, fewer, fewer female, female teams so definitely fewer female compete. teams are going to win statistically. Yes, yes. Right. And, we, and we had five out of 11 in our race that were male, female. Right. And only two female, female teams. Yeah. But they had six teams that were not male, female. So the more, there was more teams that were not male, female than but we had four male, male males. We had a lot of male males absolutely. and they, the male males were beasts. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 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 So I'm, I mean, would, and this is just my stupid observances. Like I'm not a scientist. Well, I, I just, I'm a super fan. The male, female thing is valid. And one thing that, that, Christy and I said, and why we, we think that we did well. So they do all this psychological testing and stuff. Um, and Christy and I skewed more male in some of our tendencies than, than the average female. And so we do think that that is a part of it, that there's just certain aspects of us where we're women, but we have enough masculinity in us to kind of balance it out. Yeah. And I'm there's sure you can guy. kick some of the people's asses on the show who were men as well. Like I, like I, I yeah. never doubt that. Like, you were one of my favorite teams to ever on the race. And, and I'm, anybody who ever asked me once you raced, who would I pick besides Diana? It would be you, Jen, until Kim. So now, I mean. <laughs> no. I would take Jen. I would like picked Kim over me. No. no um, the, but, you, but you two would be the definitely the, the top two on my list. I, I would take Penn over you, Justin. <laughs> yeah, but you'd still lose because male male team. I'm going. No, we would. We just sit there and fluff our hair the whole way. Just look at our We would. We'd fluff our hair. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. No. Moving on. no uh, yeah. I mean, there's a million and one questions, but you guys have been so gracious. Uh, if you want to run through it, we can. Cool. If not, you guys are welcome. If you have a few let's do a let's do a lightning round. I gotta get All right, lightning round. Uh, what was Kim's process of taking notes, drawings? Can we get a glimpse? We got that. Uh, did you recall? Uh, did you recall any memories from 19 months earlier? And did you have to rewrite your journal? Uh, uh, we we were allowed to bring our notes from the first three legs. But they had to, they literally went through and read everything to make sure there wasn't like, and you couldn't have any drawings of maps or flags or anything yeah, like yeah. that. But they are, they were big on fairness. So we talked about no U turns and we all expected a U turn, like every leg. This should definitely but my, I, my theory, and I do not know if this is correct, and I, I do want to ask them, but my theory of why there was no U turn was because we all got so close in Scotland because there was a few days between. By the time they canceled the race, by the time they got us home, my theory that was it would have been really unfair to Arun and Natalia and Mike and Mo. Who's going to U-turn them? They're the weakest teams, easily the weakest. But that's teams the same that would have been unfair to them because we all knew each other going in, and they did not. Like we didn't have yeah. that time. So my thing, I think production, there they just said everything. They needed everything to be fair. So okay. they 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 talked a lot about a lot of fairness and that like week you know mm -hmm. so i think that is why is my theory because i think it would not have been fair to that to her and talia do you, and Michael. do you think anything in the race would have changed if there was no break and we just kept racing do you think the outcome would have been uh -huh. similar 
You mean you mean if if we just kept going? I mean, yeah. like we all know what the what the route was going to be. It was going to be totally different. Like well, the, the route. I meant the outcomes. The outcomes. Do you think? Oh, I uh, gosh, would have been much different. I, I, I can honestly say, like after the first three legs, I thought that uh, Raquel and Kayla and Dusty and Ryan were the two were the two biggest threats that we had as a team. And yeah. I'm including the train heroes. Really? Uh, Ray and Car- Ray and Caro had like real kind of like yeah, they had issues. They, they were good, they did, but they had they, issues. They they were really fast. I like I, I no I I I mean maybe we Anthony wouldn't have made it in the Spencer, final three, but what Anthony and Spencer told us in in Scotland that they were going to U turn us like over a few beers Jesus. like they were drinking, yeah, and they were like you guys have a better record than us because because I knew we were I felt like we could if we we would get U turned that's fine, but we I felt like we could do well. Our worst leg was the second day in Scotland, and on our worst day we were in fifth. And we left a task eighth and made up three spots. And they had a task they didn't show. We made up three spots over other teams. And I was like, if our we're on our very worst day, we're fifth. I feel like we got a shot at this, babe. And then the next day, you know, we won. And I was like, yeah, I, th- I feel like we could do top three unless we get you turn. And if we get you turn, it's not our fault, you know. But I felt like, but Ra- Raquel and Kayla and Dusty and Ryan. And if you look like Dusty and Ryan when they were working with Anthony and Spencer. Anthony Spencer did really well when they when Anthony and Spencer weren't working with Dustin Ryan. All right. right. Yeah. Two more. So, uh, fine, to, uh, how, how difficult was it not knowing the countries you were going to uh, for a team Very that does hard. as much research as you? Do you think that was a disadvantage for somebody with your skills? I loved it. I thought it was really cool. I thought it was like really fun. What, what, that's me. Like, yeah, yeah, you can talk yeah. your, like, go ahead. No, no, you do. I thought, I thought like, I know that it, I know it bugged my wife. I thought it like, and I was trying to be sensitive to that, but I thought it was really cool that we landed somewhere and like, here we are. But then once we land, like we get to the airport and there's a French flag and then, you know, you go through customs and it's the name of the city. So I, I think, you know, and you don't, it's not like when this one, you notice, you don't just get out of the plane and start racing. You have a little bit of time. You can turn on the local news, see what the weather is, see what the, you know, the map of the island, you, our bi- one big thing that we would do is if you go to the weather channel, they always have a map of the country you're in. Uh-huh. So we sat there and stared at it as it like s- cycled around. We're like, there it is. And like, just kind of like tried to look at and it's oh crap. There it goes. There it is again. And then like, well, you know, it cycled back they out. Drive us 45 minutes and drop us off somewhere. Right. So you, they would, you didn't know what city yeah. you're in then. So they hand you a map of the city you're not in to so get they to a city. You maps. Yeah. So that's, so they either, uh, not every leg, not every leg there were maps. I'm trying to think, but there would be like Thessaloniki sure. pops up and it would be this. So if we were in Scotland, they or um, if we were in, not in Scotland, but if they were in Switzerland, they were trying to minimize us coming into contact with people. So also they never told us when we were racing. So if you like, like, um, so they didn't know, like be ready at 6 a.m. Just have your stuff ready at 6 a.m. And you'd go down for a COVID test and then go back in your hotel room for- Sneaky, sneaky. Day. And then- How long were you guys out for for the second time? 24 days. 24 days. Mm. Like when you went back. 24, 24 days. So, yeah. It was a lot. It was a lot of time. It was a lot. And a so lot of but if you look at like Sherry and Akbar and that that Lugano leg, like they're running in sweats. They thought we were traveling. They didn't tell us when we were going anywhere. Uh-huh. So um, so there would be a map of when we were in Switzerland. It would be the entire map of the country. And you're trying to get to like one tiny, like one tiny town. So mm-hmm. you could navigate to the town and then you could you could get out. Okay. Uh, three pieces of advice you would give to races for the next season and one thing you would tell them not to do for sure. And this is from people that I know are being currently kind of cast on the next season. Okay. They're going through the casting um, process right now, <laughs> but they didn't I, call me. They didn't tell me. I would say if you're in the same, if you're in the same city or even if you're able to do it over zoom, um, go to couples counseling. I wish. Uh, it, it, I mean, it, you don't have to be in a major fight to go to couple couples counseling. We wrote a book on it. Um, and we went to it, not because of the amazing race, but we went to it because we wanted to actively do maintenance on our marriage. And it, it's, you learn the right way to speak to your, thank you, Justin. You learn the right way to speak to your partner. You learn how to deescalate in stressful situations. You learn about like what happens um, during stressful situations that actually causes your body to sometimes shut down. You learn all these great things in counseling. Um, and it, it's, it's actually not a finger pointing session at all. Um, 
And if, even if you're someone who doesn't have a current relationship, you can learn a lot from something like that. That's, I know that's just one. My other two would be um, like definitely go up and down as many stairs as possible uh, because I felt like everywhere we went that there so were stairs. Show all the stairs. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and wa- listen to as many of these podcasts as you can and watch as many episodes as you can, but also go to the companion parts on the outside of it, like you guys and, and Rob and um, uh, gosh, I'm, uh, Will and James, like all these guys, like listen to what they do because they have insight that yeah. it's going to help you win. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think I paid a lot of attention when rewatching the shows, like the mistakes that people mm-hmm. made to, that got them out. And I think a lot of them were the whole, like trusting your, gut i think oh my god that's by huge. the way we we had a plan and that plan went out the window almost every day yeah. so being being open i think i also like we became a victim to the plan a few times mm-hmm. so i think we over prepared in some ways like poor pen and that second day when have you ever seen like a needle in the haystack <laughs> challenge that was so easy yeah. like we were so prepared whereas other people the, who were like, like they played that music when i found it they're like wonk, yeah. ding a dang. no it was the dumbass music it was <laughs> a dink a dunk wonky dunk dink dink dino like zoom in on my face and i'm going what but like if somebody who just casually watched the show they're like oh that must be it but somebody who was like a real fan of the show you're like like this can't be it anyway yeah um just like have a plan but like being okay with abandoning it is is yeah. something i would advise what did mike tyson say yeah. everybody has got a plan, plan until they get punched, punched in the, in the face <laughs> yeah. Bang. yes that's i've lived by that for a lot uh yes physically physically yes be in physical shape uh be comfortable in a harness know how to use it and go up and down in something in a harness know how to swim know how to row like those things should be common sense but just watch every episode of the of the show and watch uh, every episode of Races Recap because nobody else will give you the little details that'll help you win like this show. And I'm not just saying that because of who we are. That's true. It's, no, we did it's, it. It's literally yeah. you get the little things from from past racers, a lot of winners and runner ups, and you get the little things on this show that other shows can't do because they're being listened to by the production team. Like produ- I just want to say, uh, okay. Holderness is you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Joey. Uh, I was the wind beneath your wing. Yeah. Okay, we can sing that. Uh, like, Jen, oh, I'm not gonna Joey, sing. anything before I do my goodbye? Um, I just like it was just a pleasure watching you guys. The season was awesome. I think yeah. everyone really needed it. Um, I get to hang out with Jen again, which is awesome. And oh. now you guys really it was a pleasure watching. And I've I've never been so happy about being so wrong about something so stupid so thank you, <laughs> thank you. and i'm never wrong because i picked you guys to win um no, jen anything are we good uh i mean i echo joey i think it was it was really fun to have the race back and i think that the strongest team won i believe i picked you to win as well yes. but okay i'm like can't remember now thank you um so yeah, I mean, you guys were, you were really fun to watch. Uh, Penn got quite a few of my LOLs. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was a pleasure and congratulations to you guys. And I just, I appreciate your Kim, your openness and honesty, just about what you, uh, what the experience was like for you, because you raced so strong and I don't think people would ever imagine that there's maybe an inner battle that is taking place um, to Mm. get you there. And I think that that's, that's true in, in a lot more than on the amazing race um, for a lot of people in this world. So it was really important that, that people were able to see that. Well, thank you. It means a lot. Thank you. Most people who are on the race that have those issues don't talk about them or like me, didn't know they had them when they were on the race. Um, but yes, I very much appreciate who you are as people. Uh, very much appreciate who you are as a couple. And again, love to have you as representatives for the race. And thank you for hanging out with us so long. Um, I know time is the most valuable thing you guys have. And for any of you to spend any of it here with me means the world. I am a super fan who got to live his dream with his best friend. And now I get to talk about it week in and week out with incredible people. And Justin, you, you big softy. I, I am. And I, I, I hear this thing every This is very week. sweet. It's Same. very sweet. This is how I sign out every week. You are awards, Justin, for the final episode. Oh, fuck me. Go ahead. 
Well, then there goes the sweet part. Right. Sorry. There. How much did I cut the scope, but then Penn kind of interjected. I'm like, all right, we got to okay, go. Yeah. Yeah. So let, look for us on Twitter and you'll find your fucking awards on Twitter because it's time to go. Like, we've kept them for so long. And next week, yes, there will be a show where we'll be talking about the CBS The Challenge and what amazing races should be on those from the past 10 seasons. So, Ooh. I, I've heard some rumors. Mm. Yeah, I've heard some rumors too. And then I texted them and they didn't get back to me. So I think they're true. Um, we'll talk about that too. <laughs> Uh, but yes, thank you guys. I, I appreciate Pen, it. It's Pen. It's not us. Yeah. Yeah. Like spoiler yeah. alert, it is spoiler not. Spoiler alert, nobody yeah. in their forties goes on or that me. show. They want people who yeah. are going to potentially bang. Um, so uh, no, thank to each and every one of you who of took course. money out of your pocket uh, and donated it to the show. It really means a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys are awesome. For all the new fans from Kim and Penn, I appreciate you. I hope you guys had a good time here. And if you want to learn more about the show, just go back and watch them. Thank you, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, guys. Love you. We love you guys. Bye. Thank you so much. All right. So we are done streaming.